Brace yourselves, Detroit. As the sun begins to set, two of Woodward Sports' brightest young stars will be taking the mic for a brand new show. Woodward Nights with Spooner and Broder. The dog days in Detroit are over, and the boys are unleashed. Join in on the banter and hop on the bandwagon of the number one night show on the internet. Tune in to the Woodward Sports YouTube channel every weeknight from 8 to 10 p.m. Woodward Nights with Spooner and Broder. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. It is Thursday, January 4th. We're hanging out. We're ready to go. Man, oh, man. Sam Flannel, Jeff Iafrady, Brandon Dent, JB, the entire crew's here with you. And, man, we're, we got a lot to preview today. More Lions, Vikings. We're going to move on. We're past Dallas. We're moving on. On to bigger and better things. Yes. Namaste. No more referee talk. We're moving forward. We're going to talk a lot of Vikings, uh, of course, for Lions. We have John Macaroon joining the show at 8.30 as well. He's going to help us break down the game, uh, give us all the inside details, maybe give us an update on some of the injuries. We'll be talking Pro Bowl today for mm. a little bit in, in a couple of minutes here because some Lions have made the Pro Bowl. Some Lions were snubbed, in my opinion, from the Pro Bowl. But I also have thoughts on the Pro Bowl itself, which I'll get out. But first, Sam Flannel, how are you doing this morning? How are you feeling? You know, I'm doing all right. I woke up to see that the uh, Pistons lost to the Jazz in a, a oh, tough again. in a tough uh, overtime um, hard, hard-fought battle. Didn't hey, see, it didn't, didn't appear, lose in regulation again. Hey, it didn't appear like there was a lot of defense, but I, because I am an old man and I work on the morning show, I did fall asleep early. My bad, my bad. I'm still... I'm still just looking forward to this weekend of football, though. And I'm looking forward to breaking down the Lions-Vikings a little bit. Even though this game might not end up mattering in terms of seeding, it also might. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. Well, I give you credit because I didn't even turn an eye to the TV. <laughs> I didn't even tune into the game at all. That's where I'm at right now. Didn't watch the game. I actually got a text from a, from a buddy of mine that said, hey, this game is going in overtime. And I said, what? <laughs> Checked the ESPN app and said, okay. Nice. Turned it right off. They lost. Hey, and the Jazz actually had their had Laurie Markin in this time. Had had some of their had more of their best players, and the Pistons actually played them tougher this time. It's funny how that works. Yeah. Well, <laughs> JB, I had no interest. I did. Like, I, I, mean, I and that's coming from me. Like, um, arguably, probably the one of the, if not the biggest Pistons slappy of this network. I just said, click the phone. So thanks. I'm good. I mean, I watch Sopranos. I wanted to tune in, but I, obviously I did not. AEW was on, so that was probably a little bit better of Way a show. Better. But Way better. I did have money on the game, and now I have to go back and double check my bets to see if Lori Marketing hit. So <laughs> well, probably <laughs> did. See, that's where we're that's where we're at right now. It, it's it's it's. Did I make money? Yeah. Did I make money on this or not? He had a good game. I'm sure. I'm sure you hit. You know what I've been doing and making money on is just is just kind of tailing the. Jalen Duran double double. Just bet a double double every game. He's become that guy. I think right now you can say safely that he's gonna he could average twelve and twelve in his sleep. Yeah. That's I think that's almost his floor at this point. And he could eventually become a guy who averages, I don't know, seventeen and fifteen, maybe puts up prime Andre Drummond numbers. I'm not saying that he's Andre Drummond. I'm just saying that those are the type of numbers that I think he can put up at some point in his career. And hell, maybe even have a twenty fifteen season. We shall see. And I want to get into the Pro Bowl stuff because that was yesterday mm. and y y some of the announcements, and I'll read them off, who made the Pro Bowl officially for the Lions. Some guys were alternates as well. Um, but just to kind of give the uh, the guys who made it, so uh, we'll start here. Uh, let me get to this because a very certain somebody was clearly snubbed. Thank you, JB. So you have Jalen reeves Maybin. He made it on special teams. Aiden Hutchinson. Ooh, there you go. Sam Flannel, look at that. Let's go. Even with pressures. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Frank Ragnow, I'm kidding. <laughs> Center, he, he made the Pro Bowl as well. Panay Sewell, Sam Laporta. Uh, that's a pretty good pretty good five right there. I think that that's fair. Now the guys who were alternates, um, you know, it is frustrating. I'm not going to lie to you. Jameer Gibbs, okay. I'll live with it. He's an alternate. Maybe he'll even play, depending on who plays in the Super Bowl. He might get a, an opportunity to play at the Pro Bowl. Amon Ross St. Brown, he's an alternate. Uh, Jared Goff, he's, he's, he's a second alternate. Uh, Jonah Jackson, I believe this is his third alternate. And David Montgomery, Khalif Raymond, Alex Anzalone, all alternates as well. The only thing that is the biggest shock to me is Saint. 
because in, in if you have those graphics, JB, kind of comparing some of the numbers there, it just makes no sense, and it never does. This is the Pro Bowl, guys. It's a popularity contest, and Detroit typically doesn't come out on top when it comes to player popularity, even though the players skill-wise are just as good as anybody in the league. Like, I'm in Rossi and Brown. We talk a lot about him. He, at this point, with how he's playing, is a top five, top six wide receiver in the NFL. You see the stats. I mean, Puka Nakua is incredible, though. Look what he's been doing. And this is with one game missed from Amon Ra, but Puka's, Puka's the man. He's been balling. I get all of that. Uh, but my my problem was really the Mike Evans thing because, uh, listen, I like Mike Evans, right? One of the more consistent receivers throughout his entire career. But what are we doing here, Sam? All right, so... He almost says he has 40 more catches. Yeah. 40 more catches, a, a, a th- 100 more yards. Yeah, Mike Evans has him on the TDs. But if you're a better, it, it, like me, and I'll throw some money every week on the NFL, you ha- you know the Mike Evans experience where you'll throw money on him getting 70 yards and end with 30. And then there'll be other weeks he'll have 100. All right, all right. And then there'll be other weeks where he has 50. I'm going to say Brown is Mr. Consistency. He's been, he's been consistent all year. He's missed a game, but but this is why I hate the Pro Bowl, Sam Flannel. It makes right. no sense to me. All right. Easy guy on, like, the, the shots at, at Mike Evans. You want to talk about Mr. Consistency, and I'm just I'm just going to defend him for a second. He's at 1,000 yards receiving every single year that he's played. I'm talking game to game. I understand that. I, I, I understand what you're saying. And Amon Ross St. Brown, he's another guy that in his sleep can give you six for 74 and maybe even a touchdown since this year he's finally elevated those receiving touchdown numbers. Both things can be true to me. Amon Ross St. Brown was absolutely and unequivocally snubbed. He should have been a pro bowler, and I think he still might end up being a second team all pro. He is without a doubt one of the top four, or had one of the top four seasons in the NFC as far as receivers go this year. I think when it comes to Amon Ross St. Brown though, and this is the the, the kind of the, uh, the drawbacks of the Pro Bowl. Amon Ross St. Brown is the victim of the conference that he plays in because you look at the top seven receiving yards leaders in the NFL. Number one is Tyreek Hill. Numbers two through seven all play in the NFC. And I don't think Amon Ra deserved it over CD. I don't believe he deserved it over AJ Brown. I think Puka Nakua, you can definitely make an argument that he deserved it over Amon Ra. I think with with those two, it's kind of uh, how do you want it? Because Puka Nakua is probably going to break the rookie receiving yards record. He might go for 1,500 as a rookie. That is obviously deserving of a Pro Bowl season. But to be honest, Mike Evans had a Pro Bowl caliber season too. Not only did he have over 1,200 yards, he led the NFL in receiving touchdowns. DJ Moore had a Pro Bowl caliber season as well. He had 1,300 receiving yards, and he did that with a a passing offense in Chicago, which I will say is not optimal. In a couple of those games, he was playing with Tyson Badgen as his quarterback, and then you even look at Brandon Ayuk. He had over 1,300 yards as well, and that loaded San Francisco 49ers offense. So my point is is that Amon Ross should have made the Pro Bowl 100,000 million billion trillion percent. But the... but the wide receivers in the NFC just put up so many numbers. If he would have been in the AFC, he would have probably been a Pro Bowl starter. But that's just not the case because the NFC is just so loaded with receivers putting up numbers. And I see your point. Now, here, here's my counterpoint okay. to this point here. And Mike Bell, and I, yeah, he's not speaking against Amon Ra. He's just maybe providing context. That's all he's saying. He says, I think his performance versus the Bears killed his chances. Is that fair? Would you say that for Amon Ra St. Brown? Well, but every receiver has a well, bad game. Well, I was going to so. say, because yeah. Mike Evans against yeah. the, the Falcons had six targets, one catch for eight yards. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, one catch for eight yards. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think Amon Rao St. Brown had a game like that all year. Uh, one catch for six yards. No, that's... Uh, or eight yards. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, eight yards. Excuse me. One catch for eight yards. So, it, it the game don't even matter. I, I don't have a problem with the rest of the receivers you named off. Mine is just Mike Evans. I think I'm Rossing Brown had a better year than him. I do. Besides I, touchdowns. I, I agree. I, I'll take way. 40 more catches and more yards. I 100% agree, by the way. But this is why the whole yeah. point of this thing, it's, it is. Like, Mike Evans, bigger name. It, he's, and he truly has been Mr. Consistency throughout his career. And... You know, if you're talking about you're asking the average NFL fan, Mike Evans, Amon Ross St. Brown, typically they're going to they're going to know Mike Evans. Sure. Now, if you love the NFL, you'll most likely know who St. Brown is. He, he is truly now becoming Mr. Consistency with his catches. Oh, another season, 100 catches. Well, so it to me, the Pro Bowl is stupid. It really is. To me, it's it's about all pro. Uh, I just think the Mike, Mike Evans over St. Brown is is just dumb. 
It well, really is. And another thing that I personally don't like is that it, this is all announced before the last game of the season because we might be even looking more stupid if, or, or they might be looking even more stupid if Amon Ross St. Brown goes out against the Minnesota Vikings in a game where they might play their starters and goes out and has a 100-yard game, scores a touchdown, has a bunch of receptions, and then finishes the season with over 120 receptions, over 1,500 receiving yards, and 10 touchdowns. I think that that's very, very possible for Amon Ra. And even with the numbers that he has now, I think they are definitely Pro Bowl caliber. He won 100% with snub. It was probably one of the biggest overall Pro Bowl snubs of all, but that's just... Sir, sometimes you just get conference luck and conference bad luck, and this time the NFC, it was just conference bad luck. But that does not excuse that he didn't make it. He still should have made it. Hey, he's on track to get that 1,400 yards, though. I just want to put that out there. Uh, certain somebody was called a little crazy for predicting 1,400, JB. We're on track. <laughs> we need 30. And he'll, he'll, he'll land on 1,400. He's top five in yards, top five in touchdowns, and second in the league, tied for second in catches. He's close. He is really close. You got to give him credit. And I kind of agree with Sam. Like, I think it's just the conference. NFC is just so top heavy with all these guys that, yeah, someone's going to end up getting snubbed here and there, whether that's the wide receiver position or the running back position. But still, Amara is the same guy that seems to be consistent year to year. And it's just sad to see him get snubbed once again, man. So, all, all, all I can say is the Super Bowl will clear all that up. Yeah. And by the way, Lori Marketing hit. Let's go, baby. I, I, I knew he there would. There you go, JB. Yeah, Let's yeah. go, baby. And the other thing, apart because I know you brought up DJ Moore, and you brought up how the offense is an ideal for him. It's crazy because St. Brown is in an offense where there's going to be 2,000-yard backs. Yeah. And, he, <laughs> and he's still going to have 1,400 yards. It, you know, it's great. I mean, it's credit to Jared. It's Ben Johnson, like just the offense and how it's schemed. You have 2,000-yard backs. You're, probably. I mean, they're. I think they're going to hit it, which will be like the sixth time in NFL history. And you also have a 1,400-yard receiver with probably, assuming he gets a touchdown, double-digit touchdowns. I'm a little worried about Gibbs not hitting 1,000, but but regardless, he How, many, a, how he much had, does he need? He needs 85. Mm. I wouldn't sleep on it. That's tough, though. Just 85 total yards? 85 rushing yards. He can get yeah. half that in one carry. Just one breakaway, 30, 40 yard. Hey, we'll see. Hey, we'll see. Nobody we'll see. gets 20 yard runs quite like Jameer gives. That so. is that is factual. All right, let's go to break. When we come back. We'll talk about what Dan Campbell said. Hey, surprise, they're playing starters. They are against the Vikings. And I want you guys, we'll, we'll put a poll out there. I want, I want the people's opinion on that because if you've been paying attention around the NFL, you know a lot of key starters are sitting out all across the league. Lions still have something to play for technically. They're still kind of in the race for the two seed, I guess. Some teams have to lose. But I want your thoughts on that when we come back. But right now, let me tell you about our friends over at Hamlin Pub. Because, guys, ever want to be at a bar where you're known as a regular? Well, I got the place for you. Hamlin Pub, seven locations you experience where everyone is a regular. Whether you're enjoying half-off pizza on a Thursday, game day specials, uh, during all Michigan sports and NFL games, Hamlin Pub is the place. Visit a location today and experience your new favorite pub for all things sports. Since the dawn of moving people, Chevrolet has led the way. The world of transportation is changing. At Feldman Chevrolet, we are leading the charge forward. With every electric vehicle, every mile traveled, one Feldman at a time. The company that puts more Chevys on Michigan roads is now the number one name for Chevy electric vehicles. Have you ever wondered where all the finest restaurants get their steaks? It's Fairway Packing Company, providing Michigan restaurants, hotels, and casinos with prime beef for over 60 years. But now you can buy these cuts of meat for yourself at the steak shop by Fairway Packing Company. Prime Porterhouse, A5 Japanese New York strip steak, dry aged Wagyu beef tomahawk. delicious. Get to the steak shop today. Enjoy fine wine, have a private party, and get the finest cuts of meat anywhere. The Steak Shop on Mac Avenue in Gross Point Woods or order online fairwaypacking.com. We've just received word. The world's cannabis supply has vanished. 
The public is outraged and has taken to the streets in response to this tragedy. The individual responsible acted alone, and we can only hope they will make things right soon. Join Woodward Sports and Lions, Lions baby. live this Sunday for the official Lions VIP tailgate party. It's at Eastern Market and Shed Number 5, and it is going to be a bash oh. starting at 9.30 a.m. until game time. And who wouldn't want to be there for the regular season finale at Ford Field? But thank goodness the Lions will have at least one more playoff game, if you know what I mean. The official Lions tailgate is back and better than ever. How would you like to pregame with Woodward Sports and be treated like a VIP? Food, beverages, and entertainment all included. Get your tickets online today at bullseyeeventgroup.com or win some from Wilderness Sports today. Just subscribe to our YouTube, follow us on IG, and direct message, Lions VIP. Lions, baby. Welcome back to the program. Morning, Wilderness Show, Wilderness Sports Network. Don't forget, you can check us out. Uh, if you don't catch the show live, which is okay, you can go any podcast platform you listen. You get your podcast. Morning, Wilderness Show. You can fast forward, rewind. You could watch the entire show if you missed anything. Or you can go on YouTube and rewind it. Leave a five-star review for my guy Sam Flannel. Or just Sam. No flannel. Uh, not today, but I love it. Still my name. Uh, <laughs> he embraces it. And I think I'm going to have to start embracing MCDC and how he approaches this game because he is playing starters. And I took some time to think about it because I think when everyone initially reads the reports around the NFL, you have the Rams who are sitting Stafford and multiple starters. And then you have the 49ers, they're sitting, they're sitting Purdy. And then you have the Ravens sitting Lamar, Chiefs sitting Mahomes. Like, there's all the – and here you go. Here's this graphic. Thanks, JB. The Rams are sitting Matthew Stafford, which could, could could have playoff implications, including for Detroit. The 49ers are sitting Purdy. The Ravens are sitting Lamar. And the Chiefs are sitting Mahomes. In Detroit, they're playing golf. Here's why. That's Kyle Meineke, who does great work for M Live. And I wanted to bring this up today because, you know, when they asked Dan about it, he was pretty straight up with the, with the media. He's like, yeah, they're playing. And we're, you know, we're, we're going to get those guys out there. And I don't hate it because when you rest guys, it, it gets a little dangerous. I remember the Ravens with Lamar a couple years ago had the one seed, I believe. And they rested guys in the final week. And then when they played their first playoff game, they were just rusty. They didn't look great. And they lost. Yep. So I, I get the philosophy of, of playing your best football the final game of the year. And then you head into the playoffs. Now, there might be players, though, that are banged up, that – aren't 100 percent that you'd rather give the rest to and i'm sure dan's going to take that into consideration during the football game depending how it goes if they're up i can see certain guys just sitting out um and and, I, and that would be fine but i actually don't have much of a problem with this at all i don't uh this is who dan is he's, he's going to play his guys they asked him this i believe a couple weeks ago and he gave a pretty straight answer he's like we're going to play till we're not playing anymore like mm -hmm. that's how that works uh, I know people would be quick if someone gets hurt to be like, well, this is why you don't play your starters. I actually don't mind this at all. I, I don't. I, I think the Lions haven't really done they, – they won a division and they've done a lot of great things, but it's not like they could afford just to, yeah, just take the game off and we'll see you guys in the playoff game. I think these reps, they need it. They do. And, and it's a – talk about controlled theory. They get to let off some frustration uh, <laughs> against the Vikings, which yeah. they had to endure last week. So, Sam Flannel, when I read the report – I don't hate it at all. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't. Yes. The Lions 100% have to play their starters, and here's why. And we, we you, you mentioned that the Rams are sitting Matthew Stafford. And yes, um, it – they still could move up, I believe, a seed if they win the game against the uh, San Francisco 49ers. But the reality is, is that they're not going to get a home playoff game no matter what. They're locked into the wild card spot. And Matthew Stafford is older than Jared Goff. He had a, an injury last year that cost him most of the season. He missed a game earlier this season. He's just a guy that I think is more prone to getting hurt at least this year at, on this team, given his age, than like a Jared Goff, for example. The 49ers, they are locked into the one seed. The Ravens are locked into the one seed. The Chiefs are locked into the three seed. The Detroit Lions, despite the loss at Dallas, the heartbreaker, the one that probably should have been a win, they still are alive for the two seed, believe it or not. And here's the other reality. The Lions are playing at one o'clock. Both Dallas and Philadelphia are playing at 425. Yes, it would take a, da uh, a Lions win and both of those teams to lose. But at the same time, it is not outside the realm of possibility that both Philadelphia and Dallas fall this weekend. And let me tell you why. 
Both of them have in-division road games. The Philadelphia Eagles play New York at New York, and Dallas plays Washington at Washington. Those are never gimmies no matter what, and both and division road games are always tough, and both Washington and Dallas would love nothing more than to help spoil at least seeding for either of these teams. And here's the thing, too. You think... You know, obviously the Eagles and the Cowboys are going to be major, major favorites in that in those games. Absolutely, 100%. But both of those teams this year lost to the Arizona Cardinals at one point in time. And I get it. The Eagles were a little bit different because Kyler Murray was playing for the Cardinals. But the Eagles were playing for everything. They had everything on the line, and they still could not beat the Arizona Cardinals. Well, excuse me. They couldn't beat Jonathan Gannon. Pew, hey. pew, pew. Shots. Hey, a revenge <laughs> game. Legend. What a hey. legend. That Eagles defense is missing the fuck out of Jonathan Gannon. <laughs> so, yeah. so Jonathan Gannon is getting some of the last laughs. So kudos to Jonathan Gannon. But early on, the Cowboys lost to the uh, Such a goofball. The Cowboys lost to the Josh Dobbs led Arizona Cardinals. And early on in the year, both teams are trying to play for something. And oh, by the way, the Eagles at one point in time during the season went on the road to New York and lost to the Jets. So the reality is, is that. There are some controllables for the Detroit Lions. If they win against the Minnesota Vikings, they can sit back at 425 and watch both of those games and maybe hope to get a two seed. And we all know that there is a major difference between the two seed and the three seed, because if you have the two seed, you are guaranteed two home playoff games. And, and if you win those two home playoff games, you play in the NFC championship game. And then who knows, maybe the 49ers slip up at one point in time. I don't think they will, but it's possible. We've seen crazier things happen in the playoffs so yes some players could get hurt and that would that would be unfortunate but the reality is is that there is I would say a good enough reason to play the starters to to I would say take that risk because the two seed versus the three seed is a damn big difference and I think it makes it much more likely that you win two playoff games instead of one uh, hello name uh, comments. He says, don't want CD to have a rusty game in the first round, rather it be against Minnesota. And that's where I think the, 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 the good part of this whole thing comes into play. When you have guys coming back from injury, Ali McNeil, CD Deuce, JB, yep. it's important for those guys to get a game under their belt in the regular season before they go into the playoffs. I completely agree. Now, where I would... I, where I'm, I'm for resting some guys maybe would be if you're... Okay, you're up two scores. Just let Frank Ragnow rest, you know? Just let some of your more important players that maybe aren't 100%, just let them rest. Those guys are going to be the reason why you win playoff games regardless. Yeah, I, I completely agree, but, dude, I got killed for saying this. Like, I would prefer them to actually be out there playing. And, hell, after that debacle that happened at Dallas, I feel like it's the players in the locker room talking to Dan Campbell saying, like, you know what, forget that. We want to play. We want to go out there and prove ourselves to say that, hey, we can still hang with anybody, no matter if it's the first string or second string. I just think that they're, like, pissed off in the locker room right now. They want to go out there and put up 30. I know seeing them out there so close to the playoff is not imaginable. We don't want to see anyone really get hurt. But at the same time, like, as you said, you don't want to see CJ, DJ have a rusty game in the playoffs. That's just not something that you need. You want to see these guys get out here and get reps and – I'm not going to lie. I would like to see Teddy Bridgewater that second half of the game, especially if this is going to be his last go round as well, too, if he's going to retire after this. So I, I'm more than willing to sit here and play the starters, at least for the first half. But afterwards, as you said, if you're up by two, three scores, all right, pull a lot of these guys back and then just chill. Yeah, the whole season rides on, of course, if Jared Goff is healthy. So I don't hate that if you're up two, three scores, Brandon. I, at that point... It, you know, this isn't the NBA, of course. Load management yeah. isn't a thing. Uh, but for Jared and for some of these veterans that aren't 100%, if you're up, I think Dan even knows this. I know he says they're going to play, but I think in his mind, if you're up by two, three scores in the third, fourth quarter, yeah. just pull the guys. I think that's a really, really good perspective. Instead of going into this game and having them sit, especially with as much octane as they have built up off of that Dallas loss, I think the good thing to do is to let your players go out there and absolutely have a field day against the Minnesota Vikings, man. And then, if you're up, sit them. I think that gives them a little bit more momentum and a little bit more incentive as well. And I think that they need to learn to go out there and play with all their passion from the beginning, play fast, don't play scared or tight, especially leading into the playoffs, a place that, you know, some of these guys, some of the young guys, some of the rookies, and some of the long-term Lions players, they don't really have 
uh, a lot of experience in. And playoffs is a different animal. You're going to get teams that go out there and honestly play fast. They don't play tight. They go mm -hmm. out there to say, I'm trying to put you away in the first quarter. I want to be able to kind of see that out of the Lions and then give yourselves the opportunity to rest the guys that you need to rest. The one and only Corbin says, get a lead in the first half and start resting players as the game goes on. Put it on the second and third stringers to prove themselves and seal a win. I will say this, though, about, uh, again, about why I kind of I do support Dan Campbell with, with this decision. You don't, and, I'm not, and I don't think they'll lose to the, to the Vikings, but if you rest a ton of guys like a lot of teams are doing and just basically throwing up the white flag and basically saying, hey, if we lose the game, it is what it is. We'll be ready for the playoffs. I don't know how I feel about having a two-game losing streak heading into the playoffs. That's interesting. Even if it's not with your starters, I, I just I don't like the idea of that. I'd rather them, for confidence reasons, because when you play sports, a lot of it is confidence. They get a win. They beat the Vikings, bounce back from what happened last week, although technically that was a win as well. <laughs> And they get some confidence moving forward. In the Especially game. after not having lost two games all year. At, right. In a row. That's also in a, a great point. Yeah. Having lost two games all year, you don't want it to happen now or before the playoffs. And do you know what else? Uh, hypothetical loss to the Vikings would, would it, it would make the Lions 500 in their individual games this year. And I'm not saying that that's the worst thing in the world, but how with how dominant we thought that the Lions would be in this division and still ended up winning it in a pretty dominant fashion, to go 500 against divisional opponents in a year I think would be a little bit of a disappointment. The re, the the bottom line for me is that when you have seeding to play for, you cannot rest your starters. That's just that just is what it is. If if somehow the Lions were to rest, and I'm actually paraphrasing Cody Engel because he put that in a chat in the chat. Good job, Cody. I, I appreciate you for this one. If the Lions were to somehow rest their starter starters and lose to the Minnesota Vikings, and then watch later on and watch the Eagles and the Cowboys both lose, however Aww. unlikely but still possible, that would be another kick in the nuts because they can still get the two seed and if you win and if you get the two seed and you're the Detroit Lions I mean how good how confident are how I'll just go around the room how confident are all of you guys in the Lions winning home playoff games at Ford Field I'm confident more conf confident yes Jamie I'm confident yeah. more confident than going on the road even if it were to Dallas who obviously the Lions show that they could go into Dallas and play and it's indoors but still that's a tough environment the Cowboys whether or not the last win was fraudulent or not were undefeated at home I don't want to go into Dallas I would rather have them come to Detroit and and play at Ford Field that's still very very unlikely I do think that one at least one of the Eagles and the Cowboys probably both will win but when you are fighting for seeding you do not rest starters because you can always say that I was fighting for seeding even if somebody does get hurt I understand in the game last week um, for the Miami Dolphins that Bradley Chubb their best pass rusher w went down for the season with a in torn ACL time but too. that was in garbage time that was the problem wasn't that he was playing in that game because the the Dolphins are still fighting for a division it was the fact that they were down 30 at that point obviously if the Lions are up 30 or down 30 pull everyone out but they're still fighting for seeding, as were the Dolphins. That frustrated the hell out of me watching that game. Like, yeah. why is Bradley Chubb in a game where you're down 30 in the fourth quarter? <laughs> Dude, like... Mm. Like, he, he's one of your best defensive players, and he tears his ACL. See you later. The Dolphins Jeez. basically are rendered with almost no chance now. Yeah, that, Bradley Chubb's their best pass rusher. No no question. Yeah. Uh, I want to read uh, one more comment I saw here and make sure. Steve Lehman, 12-5 and five looks so much better than 11-6. and six. Does. Hey, guys, sure. I, I said eleven and six before the season, but even I don't want to be right. I'd rather have them have twelve. Sure, I, I love the, the the just the look of the aesthetic of twelve and five. I'm all for it. Does it. look a lot better, doesn't it? It, it does. <laughs> it definitely does. Uh, Harbaugh's pal Tony D says Lions dominate the Pro Bowl selections for NFC. Woot woot. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, even though they snubbed Amon Ross and Brown, I still believe that. But I think regardless. I think they have this game in the back, and they're only favored by three. Someone said. I don't know if that's true or not. I have to check. I have to check the sports books. They're, if they're favored by three, if they're assuming they're going to rest some starters, you bet that spread. You hit you, minus three. Are you checking, JV? Yeah, I'm trying to look. Yeah, right we'll, now. we'll go to break. We come back. We're going to have John Macron join us. I want an update on that spread. I want to see where it's at. Maybe if you're in the chat and you're looking, just give us give us the line because I'm curious. First, though, got to hear about our friends from Premier Pet. Yes, Premier Pet, where I get all of the best pet supplies for my Golden Retriever Jake and my Orange Cat Milo. Give your pet the best like I give my pet the best. Premier Pet Supplies, hands down, Michigan's best pet store. Same prices and all the conveniences of the online and big box retailers. With one major difference, family and local 
locally owned and operated for 30 plus years. 30? 30. Unbelievable. Over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts to help you. Same day, local curbside and home delivery. Premier Pet Supply. Give your pet the best. Visit their website at premierpetsupply.com. YouTube channel for his hot off the press takes, game analysis, and Kool-Aid sipping celebrations. You won't want to miss it. Join Maz, Stick, and special guests each week immediately following every Lions game exclusively on the WSN YouTube channel. Your home is your most important asset. Flexibility in the sales process is key. When you work with Mark White and Associates, you can cancel at any time for any reason without penalty. Speaking of flexibility, check this out. Who you work with matters. Hire the best broker in the game. Rip to the same old Lions. Let me tell you why Jack Labrador are friends. And big thanks to Sheila, Brad, and Dan for putting it all to rest. And guess what else has found the grave as well? Same old rock, paper, scissors. Jack Labrador has revolutionized that tired game with two new symbols in a franchise-changing three-point play. Discover the action at jacklabrador.gg and find out why. Once you go Jack, you'll never go back. Play now. We're back. It's the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's Thursday, so you know what that means. We're joined by our good friend. Uh, and by the way, if you're new to the show and you don't know what Thursdays are, what are you doing? It's John Macaroon, the doc, uh, publisher for All Lions, and of course the host of the Detroit Sports Podcast. John Macaroon, how you doing this morning? Yeah, guys, happy new year. You hear me okay? Oh, yes, yes. we can hear you fine. You look good, John. Oh, great, man. Trying a new setup. I'm a one-man operation. When you try stuff, you get a little nervous. Always want to show out for the boys. Happy new year. It's a great time to talk Lions football. I'm excited, man. Thanks, everybody. The chat is great this, this morning. Love yeah. the show. Yeah, John, you, you. <laughs> you are on heavies. By the way, you can check that out uh, last night. The naysayer stuff. you cracking me up, John. I can't. <laughs> that was out of pocket, too. But that's a whole other conversation. Uh, John, I want to ask you. We're, we're past Dallas. I, I don't even want to go through it. I think everyone's just kind of accepted at this point. It's BS. It is what it is. But the thought of Dan Campbell not rusting starters, where are you at with that? Do you agree? Do you see where he's coming from? Are you on the side of, hey, most of the NFL's resting starters, you should probably do the same? Yeah, no, I look when you look at the fan base they're definitely scared potentially of a major injury that could derail the Lions success in the postseason but look this football team was built on competitors how do you go to Amon Ross St. Brown Jamison Williams Jared Goff and tell them to sit they're gonna be quite upset especially when there's still something to play for I think that this football team definitely wants to avenge a real shitty loss against the Cowboys and they want to go out there and leave the regular season with a great taste in their mouth look injuries happen in football you can't prevent them I understand where people would get upset if maybe the Lions were up two three touchdowns and the starters are still in but this football team has stuff to play for and I think that when you look at it there's still some stuff this football team has to clean up in the run game in the passing game the offensive line blocking better getting into rhythm more with uh, James Williams Amon Ross St. Brown I just think that there's so much this football team can gain from whooping on the Vikings that I don't think it's worth it to rest the starters. 
I'm so glad you mentioned the angle of the Lions could still get the two seed. It's not likely, but at the end of the day, I... Philadelphia and Dallas both have road divisional games against the two worst teams in the division, but still, those are always tough. But anyway, it, c assuming that the Lions play their starters, John, do you think that this is a game where the Lions take out all of their frustration and just murder the Vikings? Or do you think it's going to be one where it's going to be a close game and the Vikings maybe keep it close or even have a shot to win? Yeah, no, I, I expect fully that this football team wins by at least two touchdowns. I mean, I would be quite surprised if they don't come out with fury, with anger, all the frustration that they have pent up from not only losing, but this week the NFL is doubling and tripling down on being wrong, putting out videos that indicate potentially that the Lions did something wrong. I just think that the us versus the world mentality, you know that message is permeating from Dan Campbell, which is, hey, Take out the frustration out on the football field. And now you got another player that's going to be looking to have his top game. I mean, I'm on Ross St. Brown. What more can you do to gain respect from the fans that are voting across the league to not be named an original pro bowler, to be named as an alternate? I think I'm on Ross St. Brown could crack 150 this game to prove that, look, I'm one of the top receivers. I think that's one of the major snubs that you saw. And I think this football team is going to go out there in front of their home fans. I think it's going to be a celebration. The fans are going to celebrate the Lions' first division title in 30 years. There's no way this football team doesn't execute. Also, they have the potential to have two running backs secure 1,000 yards in the same season. There's so many goals for this football team. Poor Vikings. They're about to take an ass whooping. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the St. Brown stuff, John, because I am, and I already hate the Pro Bowl because of how the voting works. It's ridiculous. It's not always the, the best players. It's just who, the most popular players for the most part. And for a guy like St. Brown, who is on an offense where, like you just said, two th oh, I think they're going to get 2,000 yard backs, but 2,000 yard backs, he's still going to go for 1,400. He still has over 100 catches. He's probably, he's got one TD and he's going to have double digit TDs. That is Mike Evans, a lot of respect for him. He's Mr. Consistency. But what the hell are we doing, John? That, that is the biggest confusing part of this whole Pro Bowl stuff. It makes no sense. But I want to ask you, 2,000-yard backs, what would that mean to not only the offensive line, but just this offense? You're going to have 2,000-yard backs, like I said, a 1,400-yard receiver, a quarterback with 4,000 passing yards. Like This, this is a Madden offense uh, on rookie mode, John Macaroon. What the hell is going on? Yeah, real fast. My band's in the chat. The naysayers. You didn't type in the board. You didn't vote. What are you doing out there? Are you throwing back the beers? What's going on? Spending too much time in the chat room and not voting for St. Brown? Um, look, I don't think he's going to be all that offended. He said last year, he told reporters, just the snub that I had being a fourth-round pick is enough to fuel me for my career. And I think that that's just a player that is self-motivated and will definitely continue to play at a very high level. The offense with the running backs, my goodness. Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, a clear upgrade from last year. I know the fans may be a little bit upset that the Lions made some changes on offense, but you realize Brad Holmes knows, let the man cook. He understood that this football team would be upgraded to get a true Alvin Kamara type in Jameer Gibbs, who picked it up this season after week five, understanding what his responsibilities are. And then in games where you need to close it out, David Montgomery is a true thumper, a guy that you can rely on. And you saw against Dallas in the second half, they gave the ball to David Montgomery and the Lions had success. And I think that when Ben Johnson cleans up some of the run designs that were not effective against the Cowboys when he learns from some of the things that he was not doing as, as well as you would expect from a great offensive coordinator, this football team is definitely going to be motivated to have success, put up some of those individual numbers. And for Gibbs and Montgomery, the sky's the limit, as they say. This football team is going to go as the running game goes. All right, so John, Justin Jefferson is listed as active. I know in these week 18 games, you, you you can never tell, but I'm just going to base this question off of the premise that Justin Jefferson plays because I haven't heard anything otherwise. I don't know if you have. Have you heard anything otherwise? No, I fully expect Justin Jefferson to play. Um, I think that, man, Another challenge, Dan Campbell was asked in his press conference, look, how do you stop some of these elite wide receivers? And look, it's challenging. When you look at it, you're going up against one of the elite wide receivers and you realize, okay, it's Cam Sutton, it's Kendall Vildor, and there's, he's going to get his plays. But the, the way in which the Lions are going to kind of want to approach it like they have in the past is 
you just learn from what you did against the Vikings before is you let, you know, potentially Justin Jefferson do his thing, but not to have so many explosive plays, but to limit the Vikings from getting into the end zone, force a couple turnovers, and you can live with Justin Jefferson. I mean, it, it just nearly, I mean, the, the, the playbook is really tough to try and figure out how to stop one of the elite wide receivers in the league. And you, you, Cam Sutton just hasn't looked maybe as healthy as he has. He's not doing his thing, and he's constantly missing some tackles. And you recognize, man, the secondary is going to have a challenge with Justin Jefferson, but you try to find your way to uh, limit the damage and not let the Vikings score touchdowns. And I want to ask you, John, if this is fair, because when I'm watching this this Lions team in Dallas, in a in a place where the Cowboys average 40, they typically blow out every team they face. Now, you got to look at the schedule, but regardless, though, I learned a lot about the Lions on Saturday, despite a loss. I did. I think defensively, despite CeeDee Lamb and, and having a career game, which like you said and Dan said, it's hard to stop those players. Obviously, you don't want to get 200 plus yards, but he was going to get his and make some plays regardless. This defense stepped up on Saturday, John. Aiden Hutchinson had three sacks. And to me, we know about the offense. And they didn't have their best game, but you have confidence they can bounce back. If the defense looks like that, John, in the postseason, we know where the offense is going to be. Is it fair to, to say about, about this Lions team that their shot at making a run in the NFC playoffs is – I have more confidence than I had prior to that game. Is that fair? Yeah, and you're getting back some – some reinforcements, James Houston, C.D. Deuce, Aleem McNeil, three impactful individuals are going to come back on a defense that's gaining confidence knowing that you got Ifatu Melifanwu and Kirby Joseph who are opportunistic. And this, uh, this defense is predicated on turnovers. And you recognize that if they get the opportunity to get extra possessions for that offense, my goodness, you saw Aiden Hutchinson with three sacks. Guys, the Dallas Cowboys were averaging over 35 points at home. And this football team went on the road in a hostile environment and went toe-to-toe and had an opportunity to make a defensive play if Derek Barnes didn't shrivel up in, in, in crunch time. You recognize this football team, I think, is going to rise to the challenge. But for me, this football team is going to go as, as far as the offense goes. If you give up, if you recognize that the Lions defense only gave up, you know, 20 points against Dallas, but the offense just didn't uh, deliver – that's going to be a challenge. You realize this offense has to be potent, has to get up over 25 points, has to establish the run. The, the, definitely the defense should give you confidence, but this the, the Lions run in the postseason I think is going to go as far as this offense takes them. I want to go back to the defense really quickly, though. So, John, did you see enough from them in the game at Dallas to convince you that this is something that can be sustained and maybe they can make a deep run in the, in the, in the playoffs and their defense won't cost them or maybe even help get them a win or two? Oh, yeah. I think, you know, yes, they're, people are still frustrated that the league screwed the Lions again in Dallas, but... If you kind of read the tone of how this football team, you guys have seen Dan Campbell. The man literally probably wanted to punch a wall uh, Saturday <laughs> night going yeah. into Monday. He used a great phrase, controlled fury. And football teams look for these type of things in regards to motivation. I mean, you got motivation probably for this year and next year from what just happened against Dallas. And then the league coming out and rubbing your nose in it, basically insinuating that you were at fault. Complete nonsense when you look at it and then I think what Dan Campbell did and what Aiden Hutchinson said as well Dan Campbell said I want to play Dallas again we want to right the ship and I think that when you look at this football team they're going to be motivated they're going to be very very much a team that really wants to showcase what they're about I don't think they want to settle to be division champs and hang a banner in their practice facility they want to go as these are competitors they believe this football team should gain confidence after that performance against the Cowboys because they didn't play their best and they still were within a puncher's chance. They were within a shitty official screwing them from winning a, a great football game. So this football team, I think, can get on a run and it's all going to be predicated on that first playoff game. I'm curious to see the matchup. I'm definitely kind of hoping now maybe it's the Packers because you get an inexperienced Jordan Love and you've already prepared for them. But I think this football team can make a very deep run. If they get on a roll, if, you, if this football team has a great performance round one, Look out, NFC. And then we got the Dean Blandino. I mean, Lions Nation. Like, what are, what are we doing here with <laughs> Dean Blandino? When, when has he ever spoke to, quote, Lions Nation? It's, he, he was a plant. It, that, 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 that was confusing within itself. But I want to ask you some uh, injury updates. Jameson went down with that ankle injury. How are some of the guys trending? I know we're going to get Aleem and CJ back. But James Houston, how far is he from returning and so on and so forth? 
Yeah, this week Dan Campbell's kind of told us that he maybe doesn't expect James Houston to play this week. Maybe we'll make his debut in the postseason. Uh, Sam Laporte is doing good after being seen with a limp after the game. Jameson Williams is day-to-day. He missed practice on Wednesday. We'll find out later today if he'll return. Maybe you take it a little bit easy on Jameson this week because you probably even don't need Jameson Williams to defeat the Vikings. You recognize um, C.J. Gardner-Johnson and Lee McNeil should make their return this week. Dan Campbell indicated that he wants to get them uh, a little bit more involved this week. So I would expect James Houston probably not to play, but and Jamison Williams, I, I would think that, you know, later on in the week, as we see, I, I kind of I feel like he's trending toward playing, but maybe not get the full allotment of, uh, of playing time. I just think that, you know, the way this game is going to go is the, the Lions are going to be motivated. Hey, if you guys get up two, three touchdowns, you can sit the second half. So this football team is going to be motivated, and they're going to take – they're not going to take too many risks with these guys. The Lions have always done a good job taking care of their players. They're getting healthy guys at the right time. It's time to be excited, man. I'm excited for the postseason. I, You know, the game last week was definitely a little tough to get over because you felt like you were robbed. But in the end, I feel like this was the octane fuel this football team needs to make a, the best run that they could have. Yeah, I agree with you, John. Good stuff today. I appreciate you. You can check out John Stuff, publisher of All Lions, of course, and he is the host of the Detroit Sports Podcast. You can find him on X as well. John, good luck this weekend. I'm excited, and we'll catch you next week. Uh, it's going to be fun to preview some playoffs with you because that'll be the first time, at least uh, in recent history. So let's go. This is cr- Yeah, this is crazy. This is crazy. An opportunity to cover a playoff team. Man, it's going to be fun. Detroit's going to be rocking. Sam, my man, you got to get with Jeff. You got to get some smoother moves, baby. Uh, when I saw that video, my <laughs> eyes were like, what the hell am I watching, baby? That was, uh, I'm glad Michigan won for you. But uh, my goodness, we got to work on the celebration. It was a 6 out of 10. But I know when they Ooh. win the natty, you're going to shine, baby. Get that, get that to celebration ready. It's going to be Michigan plus 10. You know, I appreciate that. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, and I think people already know this by now. I know that I'm a dork. I don't really care that much. <laughs> it was just my natural. I mean, it's how I celebrate at home. I just happen to be on camera and, and a watch party. I almost forgot for a second. And yeah, when I looked back at it, I'm like, I cringed a little yeah, bit. But, but you know what? It just is who I am. John, you think that was bad? Wait till they win the natty. Uh, he might be butt ass yeah, naked. Damn. I don't know what's going to happen. New swagger. That was the starting point. That's video <laughs> one. That's just the Rose Bowl celebration. When you get the natty celebration, I think it's going to be on point. I celebrated when Michigan State won the college, uh, the NCAA tournament. So if it happens, enjoy it, soak it in. There's no better feeling than the team that you root for winning it all. Do your thing, but you got to step it up because you can be a dork in the Rose Bowl video, but when it's the natty, got to bring it. Got to go viral, baby. Yeah, all got, right, fair, fair enough. Got to go enough. viral, baby. Appreciate you, John. We'll see you next Thursday. All right, take care. All right, let me tell you about our friends over at Planet Fitness. Speaking of extra energy Sam Flannel has from dancing, he can exhaust some of that energy going to Planet Fitness. It's the home with a judge and free zone. That's right, they won't judge you, Sam Flannel. You can do all the moves you want. They won't judge you at Planet Fitness. And we mean anybody can work on their fitness goals. At Planet Fitness, you'll experience a squeaky clean gym that has tons of equipment, a full body workout, and just 30 minutes. And all memberships include fitness training. Go get all this for just 10 bucks a month no commitment that's key no matter where you are there's a plan of fitness close by and there are more than 50 in metro detroit and thousands more throughout the world plan of fitness your fitness is essential come to lady jane's for an award-winning haircut experience and register for a once in a lifetime opportunity to win an all expenses paid suite for the 2024 ncaa tournament for you and five of your best buds lady jane's open seven days a week walk in anytime it's wicked awesome Brace yourselves, Detroit. As the sun begins to set, two of Woodward Sports' brightest young stars will be taking the mic for a brand new show. Woodward Nights with Spooner and Broder. The dog days in Detroit are over, and the boys are unleashed. Join in on the banter and hop on the bandwagon of the number one night show on the internet. Tune in to the Woodward Sports YouTube channel every weeknight from 8 to 10 p.m. Woodward Nights with Spooner and Broder.
Get your meats. Let me tell you about Fairway Pack & Co. Because for over 60 years, yes, yeah, 60 years, uh, Fairway Pack & Co. has provided Michigan's finest restaurants, hotels, and casinos with prime beef, Wagyu beef, and dry-aged beef. Experience the difference for yourself today. Visit the steak shop in Gross Point Woods for grab-and-go steaks or order online. Fairwaypacking.com. We're back. It's the Morning Woodward Show. Here on the Woodward Sports Network, appreciate you guys for watching, tuning in, choosing us this morning. If you do us a favor, hit the like button on the stream. It does help push out the show even more. So we thank you for that. I want to talk more about some of the guys coming back, maybe some players that were cut that we did not get to yesterday because we had a lot to talk about this week. It's it's actually been a great week for content. We had Michigan, mm. and now we have Michigan-Washington, which we're going to preview more tomorrow. Uh, I can't wait. And then you have Lions-Dallas, all that BS, and now you got Lions-Vikings, rusting starters. It's a fun week to talk sports. And I want to get back to something that happened not yesterday but the day prior some of the guys that were cut isaiah bugs officially cut bruce Irvin officially cut two guys yes bruce Irvin, the great bruce Irvin. yes i said that um that is this is not a drill bruce Irvin is cut from the detroit lions <laughs> cue the sad music uh and then you but you also get cd deuce returning you get james houston returning you get a lean mcneil returning dan gets his guys back the guys who were here uh, during the, the uh, except for Sanders, but during last good. year, he was a very he looks good. good. Uh, or at least in the DBs. I don't know if CD is his body on the screen, that was Kirby Joseph. But he's out there, look at him, he's getting his reps in. Uh, he looks good. He just brings a different type of energy. And again, another guy, two guys coming back that do what the Lions need on defense. One, James Houston. Get after the quarterback. They need more of a consistent pass rush. He helps out with that. You get C.D. Deuce back, who I don't know, is an interception machine. He takes the football away. And he's one of the, the battery packs on defense. He brings the energy. So the Lions, it's a, it's a great time to get these two back. And Lee McNeil, uh, I don't know, by the way, second on your team in sacks. Mm. And he's the running mate with uh, Aiden Hutchinson there. So you're going to get Lee McNeil, James Houston, not this week, but the following week when you get into the playoffs. But still, you're getting James Houston back. Look at Aleem. He looks good. He's got that knee brace on. He says he feels good wearing it. Look at him. That's, that's a grown-ass man running sprints right there. And this couldn't come at a better time. I'm excited. I think it's great. Bruce Irvin, Isaiah Bugs, yes, fan favorites. But the, at the end of the day, you upgrade it. So uh, who cares at this point? Well, the Bugs one has, the Bugs situation has always been a little confusing. I think for all of us at, at one point or another, because he's better than a lot of the other people that they've had at the defensive tackle position, whether it be Benito Jones or Bohana or anybody like that. I, Isaiah Bugs has made some plays. So with him, I just, I don't know what's what's going on. I would have liked to have seen him maybe sh share the field with Ali McNeil at times during the playoffs. But you know, it it's not the end of the world, especially if Ali McNeil comes back. Here's the thing getting I'll call him this for the first time ever CD Deuce back and uh, James Houston it could end up I don't like I like to do this too because I'm a bit of a dork and I, I get this from Nick Wright the blind resume thing so you're getting back a guy who last year was the tied for the league lead in interceptions and you're getting back the guy who had the most snack sacks per snaps of any player in the NFL I don't know that for a fact but I'm just gonna assume it's it's a fact on oh that he's, one. A, he's up there yeah, for sure he is one he he's definitely number number one I, I can't verify that but eight sacks in seven games is absolutely unbelievable you're getting both of those guys back to your team Team. Is that an upgrade? Yes, it absolutely is, no matter what. Especially considering the fact that what is one of the biggest problems for this Detroit Lions defense been? And I know James Houston probably isn't playing this week, but hopefully for the playoffs. There is no book and edge rusher for Aiden Hutchinson. I know Romeo Aquara has made a play or two, but he hasn't gotten a lot of snaps, hasn't been consistent. Charles Harris made a play or two at the beginning of the year. But they're but still looking for yes, him. He's missing. Yes, Charles Harris has done basically bub kiss the last uh, half. <laughs> like basically three quarters of the season. Julian Okwara can't stay on the field. And even when he was, he was, I would say, inconsistent. John Kaminsky, I would say, has had a down year. Josh Pascal, I know he's a guy that you can move around the defensive line, either whether at interior or edge, but he's another one. Made a couple of plays, but has been inconsistent and hurt as he kind of always has been in his first two years in Detroit. So getting a book and edge rusher back, especially one who had such a great, as great of a season as James Houston did last year, that value cannot be overstated. I understand that coming back from a major injury after missing most of the season, he's not going to come back. 
hitting the ground running 100%, probably at any point during the playoffs. But if he can just make a couple of plays, it would be huge from this team. And especially if he can create some attention <laughs> that can be diverted away from Aiden Hutchinson. And also getting C.D. Deuce back in the secondary. I understand that he's more of a safety. And the Lions, when it comes to the safety position, have been pretty damn good, especially as of late, especially when Ify Melifamu emerged and has been definitely a revelation in the past three games. That is all true. But with C.D. Deuce back, maybe you can move Br Brian Branch and Ify Melifamu and C.D. Deuce around at some points on the defense because all of them at some point in time have played at least slot corner. I mean, Ify, it might have been since college, but still the the corner position is where is the biggest concern because you know cam sutton i would say has had a down year i don't think he's a quarter cornerback one kendall vildor he shouldn't be anyone's cornerback two they really miss emmanuel mosley but if you can create a defense where you're really deep at safety and you can move people around and play some intricate coverages i think cd deuce would allow you to do a little bit of that more and like i and like we said cd deuce was an interception machine last year he had an interception for every two games that he played and one of the ways in which this Lions defense can be opportunistic and can win games is by creating turnovers. That's what they did against the Minnesota Vikings last time. They gave up a lot of passing yards to Nick Mullins, but they also forced four interceptions. This Lions defense is basically based on the opposing team's running back getting nothing and liking it, which is what has been happening all season long, and being bend but don't break when it comes to the passing game because they haven't given up a lot of passing yards to and a lot of big games to a lot of quarterbacks, but they've also had some games where they forced the one timely turnover and that's all that they needed. They did it against Dallas a couple of times. Even though they lost that game, they still only gave up 20 points. So getting two of what were projected to be your better players back on defense, and oh, Oh, by the way, I forgot about Lee McNeil, who was on his way to being a potential pro bowler at the defensive tackle position, was absolutely phenomenal, is still number two on your team in sacks. Just imagine a couple, some plays in the playoffs of James Houston, Aiden Hutchinson, Ali McNeil. Mm. That is how this defense was be, was desi was designed to be played at points during the year, and it really has never been able to happen. But if it can happen into the playoffs... I like their chances more than I did without um, hot, without uh, Aleem and Houston. Yeah, and Isaiah Bugs, although he's he's been a fan favorite, there's there's been something going on behind the scenes. It's very clear. Like they 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 kept Tyson Alu Alu, so clearly he's doing something correct that sure. Isaiah Bugs is not doing correctly. It is what it is. Now for Charles Harris, that's a whole nother storyline. It's not even 2019. He's still social distancing at this point. He's still six feet away from the quarterback every single play. That's where we're at with Charles Harris. It's it's been a problem. Uh, so I appreciate you for going through protocols, Charles Harris. But yeah, you actually have to touch the quarterback. Uh, that's why they paid you, and he has not been doing that. So he's been awful this year. Now off the field, I'm sure he's a great guy. I'm sure he's a leader in the locker room. Um, but on the field, he's been butt cheeks. That's how this thing has <laughs> went. Now, James Houston is certainly going to help out this pass rush. Absolutely yes. he will. And Aiden Hutchinson coming off a big, big game, that's a confidence booster. Now you get your his, his true running mate in James Houston, which, like you said, eight sacks in seven games. I, we don't know for a fact, but I, I would safely say that has to be the highest set, uh, per game sack total in the in the nfl in that sample size well per it's, snap definitely per because snap. he didn't even play a lot of snaps no he did yeah. not he did not uh in some of the comments coming in here i want to read them uh hello name says bugs and ag got into it apparently uh king net tube says bugs is way out of shape yeah and uh, brandon knox says bugs will be missed and, and i did i liked bugs and i think he held it down um but like i said there's there's clearly the out of shape thing makes sense like there has to be something a reason why he was cut more so because Bruce Irvin you notice that Dan Campbell I noticed these little details when they brought up Bruce Irvin at the press conference Dan Campbell what he said about Bruce Irvin versus when they asked him about Isaiah Bugs very differently yeah. Bruce Irvin was he's a professional you know da 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 he spoke he spoke at nauseum and then Isaiah Bugs is like yeah we just had to move on like it was it was pretty short with Isaiah Bugs read into the headlines a little bit uh that's not normal something's going on with Bugs it doesn't take a, a scientist to know that uh, B. Taylor says the whole staff had to take up for him. Uh, Charles McLean says Houston's problem, though, is if he doesn't rush the quarterback and teams run at him, Houston overruns the play. My biggest thing with James Houston, I'm curious what he looks like coming off an injury. Yeah. Because I think people, and I said this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep saying it, I think people have this idea about James Houston, which is fair because it's always seen, like we said, a sack a game. I mean, the first game he'll play will be a playoff game. And I'll tell you what, 
if James Houston comes out there and gets a sack, I would be impressed. I don't think that's good. I, I think it's going to take a little bit of time, maybe a, you know, a ton of snaps, which he is coming off an injury. But I don't know if it's fair to expect James Houston of last year in his first game. Am I off on that? You are definitely not off. And when I was talking about getting guys like 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 James Houston, leader in the NFL in sacks per snaps, and CD Deuce even tied for the NFL in interception league lead last year, I'm not I'm not assuming that they're going to come back 100% healthy and hitting the ground running. There's going to be some rust. I mean, they haven't. Neither of them have played since week two, so that's going to be a problem. And especially going into, especially James Houston, your first game being a playoff game, those are some big stakes. Stakes, especially for somebody who's only played what nine games in, in his entire career that's tough I don't think I'm, I don't think that James Houston will get four sacks in the playoffs and CD Deuce will get two or three interceptions but what they can potentially do to a defense which although better and although looked very very impressive against Dallas is still their weak their their, their weakness and James Houston and CD Deuce were expected to be two of their most impactful players and getting them back for the playoffs you would rather have them back and the potential of them making some huge plays than them not coming back they are they are still going to be valuable I am almost positive of it and I don't I'm not, I'm not going to say that the Lions will regret cutting uh Bruce Irvin but he did have a sack last year in, in the playoffs yeah so He's, I just for playoff experience, like James Houston has never played in a playoff game. So for him, and I, by the way, I get cutting Bruce Irvin. I'm not it's James freaking Houston. Like you cut <laughs> you cut Bruce Irvin. But I'm just curious with the playoff stuff. Like you got a a young roster. There's players like CD Deuce who he played in the Super Bowl. Jared Goff. Offensively, I'm not as worried. But defensively, some of your best players up front. It's their first game. It's their first taste of the playoffs. Yeah. So I'm curious how they respond going to the first playoff game. You got, and of course, Aleem and James coming off injuries. I think they'll be all right, but it's something to watch for. All right, let's go to break. When we come back, uh, we'll get into the Vikings game a little bit here because Nick Mullins is back. It's like the Undertaker music. He's he's back from the dead. <laughs> you know, they tried Jared Hall, J- Jaron Hall from BYU, the Mormon. They tried him last week. Didn't work out. Jordan Love ripped up that defense, though. He had three passing touchdowns, which actually, Jordan Love, and on a side note, he's having kind of a good year. Yeah. I mean, he's had 30 passing touchdowns in his first year. But he torched that Vikings defense, which the Lions will be playing this week. And they got a new quarterback. I think it's an opportunity for this Lions defense. I really, truly do. But first, I got to tell you, or Sam has to tell you about our friends over at Swiss Insurance. Do you have football on the brain? Of course you do. It is the perfect time of the year to be shopping your home and auto insurance, especially going into the NFL playoffs in which we get to watch our Detroit Lions in a home playoff game at least one. It is Shop It Like a Pro with Swiss Insurance. They cover Woodward Sports Network, and they should be covering you too. Ask for Mark at Swiss Insurance today at SwissINS.com or call 248-800-4177. Again, that is 248-800-4177, Swiss Insurance. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Woodward Sports own Tom Mazaway and Sam Stick Day will be hosting our Lions postgame show after every Lions game all season long. Tune in to the Woodward Sports YouTube channel for his hot off the press takes, game analysis, and Kool Aid sipping celebrations. You won't want to miss it. Join Maz, Stick, and special guests each week immediately following every Lions game exclusively on the WSN YouTube channel.
forgot. There we go. Oh, cheers, buddy. I think we need to get you a pick. Ah, it's football time. So you know Glorious Cannabis has dropped their new ice water bubble hash infused pre-roll called Hana Lulu Blue. It smells so good. It's like the whiff of the first playoff win in 31 years. It's a gassy, aggressive strain named in honor of our Detroit football team. If you haven't had one of these ice water pre-rolls, then what are you waiting for? Go to go and check them out at Dispo Dispensary near you and check them out online today for 25% off at GloriousCanna.com. We're back. It's the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. Preview and Lions Vikings. We'll get into the matchup a little bit here because Nick Mullins is officially back. Yes, I said it. Nick Mullins, the one, the only. There you go. Ian Rappaport. The Vikings will officially start Nick Mullins against the Lions per coach Kevin O'Connell. Thank you, Kevin O'Connell. Uh, we'll take Nick Mullins. Because you look at the Vikings, too. Their leader in passing yards. He's still Kirk Cousins, of course, but they're leading in passing. Their leader in passing yards, rushing yards, and receiving yards are not going to be playing. Oh, yeah. That's well, right. Well, yeah. excuse me. Madison will be playing, but you wouldn't know. He hasn't done crap <laughs> the last three weeks. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very different roster. They really don't have much to play for. If they win, they, they really don't have a chance to make the playoffs. Everything has to fall a certain way for them even to make it. I believe they have like a 10% chance or something like that to make the even make the playoffs. So it's a team that doesn't have a lot to play for, but still, this is one of those teams that they're going to try to steal one. That's just how it works. And for the Lions to only be favored by three and a half, something's fishy. Because it opened up on ESPN bet at minus four and a half, and it went down to minus three and a half. Hmm. What am I not understanding? The Lions are only a minus 175 on the money line. Is it is it the Nick Mullins effect? I can't imagine so. It must have been because the game was so close in Minnesota, but it, I don't know. It, it, it again, it, it is what I'm still gonna I'm gonna hammer that spread for sure. I think the Lions win by at least three and a half, certainly. Um, but I think the Lions do take care of the Vikings. I know the Brian Flores is gonna be a different defense, but if you look at the Vikings defense, I know we've been and I've been hyping up Brian Flores over the last couple of weeks, even like last game they lost 33 to 10 they've given up almost 30 points the last three games because they had that ugly ugly game against the Raiders where they won 3-0 mm-hmm. and we we played or you know the Lions played them two weeks after the Bengals that game was close and we talked about it we're like well maybe the Lions could take advantage they've given up almost 30 the last three weeks this defense doesn't look like they looked and if you have Panay Sewell who I didn't get the graphic to JB, but if you, they posted something, I think it was on Ward Sports actually on X. You can check it out yourself. Panay Sewell against like top edge rushers in the NFL. He pretty much completely eliminated Daniil Hunter when they played the Vikings at Minnesota. I don't see how the Vikings beat the Lions here. I don't. Unless they rested players, which they're not. So even if Justin Jefferson goes for 200 yards like he did and Nick Mullins has 300 passing yards... I don't see it, Sam. I, I just don't. Especially if you're getting CD, you're getting CD Deuce back in the lineup. You're getting Ali McNeil back. They're going to be pissed off from last week. I, I just I don't see a scenario in which they lose this game. I just don't. All right. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think this game is going to be won in a similar way that they've won a lot of games, although it might be a little bit more lopsided. Although, by the way, one funky Lions fan. Thanks so much for watching, bro. Look at this face look at oh <laughs> anywho anywho let me just uh get get back to my uh di- diet diatribe I've, I've been reading the comments bro it's it's all well and good i got thick, <laughs> i got thick skin and broad shoulders i can take it but okay i got a little bit sidetracked for a second but i'm a pro so i will get back on track i think that the lions defense that they are it, it's going to be a similar way in which they won the last game i don't think nick mullins will throw for as many yards but i think given the fact that justin jefferson is back there is is on is their wide receiver and our corners have definitely been a little shaky i think that he's going to have a big game i think that he goes for at least a buck 50 and i don't think that's crazy to think because the lions have allowed a lot of passing yards this season and a lot of big games to number one wide receivers which is fine 
fine as long as they win. I think the Vikings running back, whether it's Ty Chandler or Alexander Madison, gets nothing and likes it because that's what the Lions have done all year. And it also wouldn't shock me if the pass rush gets home a couple of more times. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm predicting a sack and a half for Aiden Hutchinson. That's my final stat prediction, but I think he will be constantly in the backfield. And on and offensively, I just I don't this Vikings defense I understand that overall and especially for stretches during the year has been good but the Lions had no trouble with them in the la the last time they they played them the Packers just had no trouble with them and oh by the way the Vikings defense is going to be without their second best pass rusher DJ Wanham who got hurt against the Detroit Lions so I think the Lions should probably win by double digits. I think the Vikings will put up some some points and get some yards. I think Nick Mullins may throw a YOLO ball or two that J Justin Jefferson comes down with, but the Vikings offense is not going to be efficient. They're not going to be able to run the ball at all. TJ Hawkinson is going to be out for the whole game. So there goes uh, their leading receiver for the season and one of their best underneath targets for damn sure. So. I don't get why it's only three and a half. Maybe they're assuming that the Lions rest some starters. Maybe Nick Mullins being the starter as opposed to Jaron Hall bumps it up a little bit because I think Nick Mullins is better. But the Minnesota Vikings right now, they've just, they're such a mess. They've played four quarterbacks this season. They've dealt with some injuries at times to Justin Jefferson and now to DJ Wanham and now to TJ Hawkinson that I just can't imagine them playing their best game. And I think their defense has been shown to have been maybe a little overrated at times and maybe it's more of a middle of the pack defense than a good defense if that makes sense yeah you can only do so much with you know it's like brian flores you know it, it, a very very highly regarded chef and you're just handing him just dollar store ingredients and you're like figure it out he, he figured it out for a while there but now it's just kind of you know it's 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 kind of falling apart. And the injuries don't help either. I mean, even this week, uh, two DBs for them. Byron Murphy Jr., who's really their best corner. He's questionable. He didn't practice. He has a knee injury. Um, he, he might play. We'll see if he practices today and tomorrow. Um, but you also have Harrison Smith, who had a light practice. So they're banged up in the secondary as well. It's a very simple game plan to me, JB, Brandon. Run the football. Get David and Jameer two. Th get them both 1,000 yards. Yep. And get the hell out of there like you stole something. Get a win and get out of there. Yeah, that, I mean, don't get it, cute. Just just win and, and get out of there. I mean, don't get cute, Ben Johnson. Keep all those plays that you have still back there in the notebook. You know, save them for the playoffs. As you said, run the ball. Get David and Monty those thousand yards. Hell, I'm in Ra. If he goes for a hundred, I'm happy with that as well too. But keep everyone safe, healthy. Play them that first half. If you're up big, start benching everybody because we need everyone good to go for playoffs. So. That, that's just my idea behind it yeah i don't think it's that it's that it's it's that complicated brandon you just get in yeah. there you get everyone healthy and you get out of there yeah and i think they're gonna reps. be able to do that yeah get them some reps and if some of the guys like cj gj lee mcneil uh james Houston, if they're back let those guys get comfortable uh just before the playoffs but ultimately you want to make sure that you're playing good football. You want to believe in and instill confidence in your backups as well. I think that that's key going into the going into the playoffs. Obviously, you want to rely on your starters. You want to rely on your stars. But to make sure that your entire team is on the same page and is firing on all cylinders going into the playoffs, I think is a great thing for this Detroit Lions team, especially one that they've been able to shake off tough losses. They've been able to shake off mistakes all year. I think that this is a good opportunity for them to be able to go start fast and end the game strong still, even if they wind up going to uh, the backups. And you're playing, I mean, you're playing Nick Mullins, who yeah. at least at this point, and really throughout his entire career, but specifically that last game the Lions played, he did his best Oprah Winfrey impression. <laughs> you get a pick. Yeah. You get a pick. It's like Oprah giving away free cars. And I think, hey, for Kirby Joseph and for some of these corners and some of the guys in the secondary. No, they're about to eat. Pad your stats. Pad They're your stats. Eat. I, and, I know it. And John Kamitsky, can you just pick up the, the ball just when it's on the ground? Preferably. <laughs> or just like fall on or it. Or fall just on it. Just fall on it and just bear hug it. Don't let anybody even sneak their hands in or anything. Give no doubt that right. you have the ball. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't come down to a crunch time play like that because the Lions will already have the game wrapped up. But still, you can't be making mistakes like that because it damn near was one of the things that cost them a win last time I got the Vikings, but it didn't. It's so funny. I should you know slap myself in the face for this, but I was talking about <laughs> Vikings injuries and I didn't even mention Kirk Cousins. I think we're so used to it by now, but that pretty much cost them the 
season. And the Lions getting to play the Vikings later on in the year have the privilege of and the honor and the privilege of facing Nick Mullins twice instead of Kirk Cousins. And that's a big time advantage, even even in, in this game. I know Nick Mullins got some yards, but he just throws it up for grabs way too often. He had two picks even the week before against Cincinnati. And the worst one that he threw was negated by a Trey Hendrickson offsides. The man is just, he's like a, he's just so reckless. He's doing his best Jameis Winston impression from a few years ago where he might have a bunch of yards. He might throw a couple touchdowns, but he is going to give it to the defense a couple of times. And what, do, what does this Lions defense, I don't know if it thrives on, but it has to rely on at times creating turnovers, stalling these drives, creating timely turnovers. And Nick Mullins... If, if they get to the red zone, even, it wouldn't shock me at all if he throws a pick. Would it shock anybody? No, it wouldn't. Uh, Wheezy D313 says, don't run the ball. I don't want Jackson and Ragnall getting rolled up on. Well, I could counter that, Wheezy, with don't pass the ball because Jared Goff will get killed. Uh, there's a possibility he could get killed. Like, that's – so it, it works both ways. You're, if you're going to get hurt, you're going to get hurt. You can get rolled up on in a passing play, running – it does not really matter. It just – injuries just kind of happen. And the last thing you want – is Jared Goff getting injured? The last thing. that Because if he gets injured, season's over. It's over. It's oh, done. Yeah. yeah. Unless, you have, unless you have Nick Foles flying in on a chopper to get off and save your season, which I don't think is going to happen. So, uh, you look if you at ask the, the fans, send the hookers to save you. Uh, he, well, <laughs> that's true. But Hooker season, baby. Adam Schefter tweeted out. This is in, I, It's just funny to think about. Confirmed Week 18 starting quarterback so far. Blaine Gabbert, Jeff Driscoll. The return of the great oh, Jeff Driscoll. God. Carson Wentz, Nick Mullins, Trevor Simeon, Easton Stick, Tyrod Taylor, Sam Howell, Mason Rudolph, and Jarrett Stidham. Wow, that is ass. Yeah. Carson Wentz. Wow. Carson Wentz. Carson went for the wow. Rams. Yeah. I totally forgot he was a backup for the Rams. Yeah, no, he got I, I think he got signed midseason, but when the Rams had Stafford miss a game, they had to play Brett Rippin and they went on the road to Green the Bay. Almighty Bear. And I believe they only scored three points and he was absolutely <laughs> awful. But you know what's funny? One of the names that you mentioned and the a boy who a man, I will say a man, a boy is a very, very disrespectful to him. A man who used to sit in the T D booth over there was hyping up old Sam Howell the whole year. And we had to concede at some point. But Sam Howell actually might blow. <laughs> he might actually just blow. You, you see how they bench him? They start him. They bench yes. him. They start him. Like, pick one, Ron Rivera. And I get that he's running for his life. Stop typing. I get that he's running for his life. But his touchdown to interception ratio, I believe it's at one to one at this point. Hey. It's not good. He's slaying it, though. He can. Hey. He throws it to people. They, it just sometimes goes to opposing. Sometimes to the, goes to, to yeah to the opposing yes. team. Uh, he's about to have a twenty and twenty season, I think. Twenty twenty vision from Sam. Oh, Hull. I think it's possible. And Let, maybe next year he'll go for the esteemed thirty thirty that uh, Jameis Winston is famous for. Thirty for thirty. Yeah, thirty for thirty. No, he likes sunglasses with a thirty on one and a thirty <laughs> on the other. <laughs> Jameis is he's funny. Let's go to break. We get back. It, it is not top ten Tuesday, but this week it's top ten Thursday. We're gonna give our top ten teams. You get to see where we have the Lions. And then, of course, we'll uh, we got something to talk about at nine thirty, and uh, I'm gonna wait till it comes up. It's a surprise, and then at nine forty-five, we got what's running with JB, and then mailbag. It's already in the second hour of the show. But first, gotta hear about our friends from Big Boy. Let me tell you about them. Winter time in Detroit is almost here, or basically, it is. You wouldn't know it's not snowing, which I prefer, by the way. It is what it is. Can't complain. But you go to Big Boy. They got it all for you. The classic potato pancakes. The stuffed potato pancakes. You want breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. They got it all. Now how about breakfast? The potato pancakes are back. Of course, you can top it all off with the new gingerbread, uh, gingerbread excuse me, shake for dessert. Stop by our local Big Boy today, and they'll take care of you. Savor the heart of home at Big Boy with our all-new down-home comfort dishes. Feast on homestyle goodness with our Southern Comfort Chicken Bowl, veal parmigiana, and apple pie hotcakes. The down-home delight doesn't stop there. Potato pancakes are back. Dive into the richness of our perfectly crafted potatoes with our classic potato pancakes and our stuffed potato pancakes. Top off your meal with our new gingerbread shake, a seamless blend of creamy vanilla and sweet gingerbread flavors. Nothing beats the comforting taste of down-home cooking. Enjoy every bite, only a big boy. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today.
Feldman Chevrolet, Detroit's number one Chevy dealer. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, first-class car buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. Catch Forward Sports Network live from Feldman Chevrolet every other Monday, actually this upcoming Monday, for us previewing and breaking down Lions victories or losses. Hopefully a victory, though. And we're going to break down that Michigan national Ooh. championship game mm. Hopefully it's a good weekend i do i i uh, this this could go either way you know we could have a great weekend or we could be, could be recapping two losses i don't want to put that oh. out there but it is what it is uh two wins though that's what we expect yes let's get into a top 10 tuesday uh we do this every tuesday but it's top 10 thursday so we're doing it on thursday this week we're switching it up we're calling an audible and sam flannel i'm gonna let you go first I'm curious where you have each team ranked. Let's check it out, JB. Throw it up. Sam, what do you got? Talk to me. All right. 10. I got the Los Angeles Rams. Obviously, wow. they, they they almost didn't make the list if they would have lost at New York. That would have been pretty bad. But Matthew Stafford's having a damn good year. Kyron Williams is a great back. Their, their receivers, Naku, Puka Nakua is a damn good receiver. Cooper Cup and their defense led by Aaron Donald has been better. And some of the rookies and guys you never really heard of have stepped up. So I got to give the Los Angeles Rams some credit. At number 9... I have the Buffalo Bills, who had a little bit too much trouble at home with the New England They're Patriots. They're such a bad 10 and 6 team. It, it, like, I don't. I, what, is, what happened to Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen? That's the question that we all want to know because at one point, Stephon Diggs was one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, but over the past however many weeks, he just hasn't quite looked like that. They don't seem to have the same chemistry. I like their defense. I like the fact that they've gotten their running game going a little bit more, and I do think Josh Allen is a damn good quarterback, and they're on a streak. They could still go into Miami and win and win the, the AFC East, but... They, they've lost some games that they just should not have, like at home against the Broncos and at New York against the Jets early on in the year. So that's why they're at nine. At number eight, I have the Kansas City Chiefs, who got a win, and they looked a little bit better. Patrick Mahomes hit a couple of deep shots to Rasheed Rice and to Justin Watson. Their, Isaiah Pacheco had a damn good game. But that defense, that defense is still what should scare AFC opponents because they were getting after Jake Browning, especially at the end of the game. And Steve Spagnuolo can call up some amazing blitz packages. And oh, by the way, they still have Chris Jones and George Karloff. This is a double-digit sack guy, so credit to him as well. Number seven, the Miami Dolphins. I struggled with even putting them this high because they just had a terrible loss at Baltimore. I get it. It's at Baltimore. The Lions went to Baltimore and got killed. The 49ers got killed at home by Baltimore, but this was just an absolute beatdown. And oh, by the way, you lost your best pass rusher, and I don't think their defense is going to be able to hold up in the playoffs. And, and their offense can't really do anything unless they are at home. I mean, it can be good, but they're, they can look unstoppable at times at home, and they might not even get any home playoff games because I think they're going to get the wild card because I think the Bills go in and beat them. At number six, let me just check this again. I have the Philadelphia Eagles. Man, did they have a bad loss. That defense in the second half against Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals was absolutely atrocious. They had that game in their hands. They had a double-digit lead in the second half, and they blew it. Shots. I can't. I can't. Hey. Jonathan pew, Gannon pew, pew. revenge game. Explosive. Explosives. It was Kyler Murray's <laughs> explosive plays. Like he was kind of predicting early on in the season. He maybe. called it. With like, yeah, he, he definitely called it. So... The Eagles, their defense is just bad. There's no way around it. It's one of the worst defenses in the NFL, even though they have so much talent. And uh, how do you enjoy Matt Patricia, the Philadelphia Eagles? Probably not so much. At number five, I have the Cleveland Browns. They just keep winning games. Joe Flacco just keeps slinging the football all around the field. He's not perfect, but man, he has just revitalized this Cleveland Browns offense. And the way that they've been able to keep winning games despite injuries to their quarterback, their Nick Chubb, who is the engine of that team, it's still very very impressive and that defense I definitely trust that pass rush going into the playoffs especially led by Miles Garrett at number four I have the Detroit Lions they showed me definitely a whole lot going to Dallas and hanging with them and their defense looking really really good it just was unfortunate that they chose that day to have an off game offensively which is easy to do on the road against Dallas but they still had some costly turnovers the only reason I have them lower than the Cowboys is because I don't trust their defense the Detroit Lions as much as the Cowboys and I'll just kind of combine four and three into one I think Dak's a better quarterback than Jared Goff I think CD's a better wide wide receiver one than Amon Ross St. Brown I definitely trust their defense 
offensive line and their secondary way more than the Detroit Lions. And that is why I have the Cowboys. I think they're better defensively there. And their offense has been damn good this year as well. At number two, the San Francisco 49ers. They just clinched the one seed in the NFC. They've got probably the best group of wide receiver tight end weapons in the NFL, along with Christian McCaffrey. And that defensive line, it cannot be overstated how dangerous they could be come playoff time. They're the best team in the NFC, but they are not. They've been number one a lot throughout the year, but they are not as good as the Baltimore Ravens, who just played the Miami Dolphins, a team that might win their division and beat them 56 to 19. And Lamar Jackson, he probably just played the best regular season game of his career. Just locked up MVP. He locked up MVP. And I had some doubts. I had some doubts for much of the year uh, on whether Lamar Jackson could win MVP. But when you throw five touchdown passes in that game, given the fact that he's already played a bunch of good games, he's already has his career high in passing yards for a season. He's been running the ball effectively. And the Ravens have the best record in the NFL. You got to give it to Lamar. And oh, by the way, that defense led by that front, Justin Matabuke is is a damn good defensive tackle. He's had double-digit sacks. Jadavion Clowney, that secondary, the linebackers led by Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen. This could be the year that the Baltimore Ravens shake some playoff demons, at least recent playoff demons with Lamar Jackson as their quarterback and finally break through. I don't think anyone would be that surprised. It's, uh, you know what? It's a cute list. Ah, I don't mind it. cute. <laughs> It's a, it's a cute list. Uh, and you actually have the people's support. 52% say W. Oh, thank 48% you. say L. Now it's 51-49. So they approve a uh, majority approve of Sam's list. Now let's put up the correct list, JB. Mm. Put up my list. Let's talk about it for a second. Here you go. Um, all right. There you go. Buffalo Bills. I have them at 10. I think they barely just, just snuck on here. They're just kind of hiding in the corner. They're like, I'm here. It's like the guy at the party that really wasn't invited. He's just kind of hanging out, chilling. <laughs> Try to pick up some ladies. That's the Buffalo Bills. Just kind of hanging on my list nonchalantly. They're on there. Nine Kansas City Chiefs. They're hanging on too. I'll tell you one thing. They're hanging on too. But they're good enough. At least you look at the, the teams in the NFL right now. A lot of parity, but at the top, there's not too many. So Kansas City, they made my list as well. They're at nine. Eight, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. They look awful. They do. Uh, you lose to Jonathan Gannon, I don't give a damn. That, and, and not only that, you've lost, what, the last three straight for the Eagles? No, or, excuse me, they've lost, them, like, what, three of the last four, whatever it is, yeah, two of the last yeah. three. They, I know they beat the Giants barely with Tyrod Taylor coming in at halftime. But regardless, they made the list. They're at eight. I have Cleveland above Philly because Joe Flacco is balling. Joe Flacco's balling. And it's been fun to see the story. Jerome Ford, they don't have Nick Chubb. They're, they're playing well, so I'm going to give the Cleveland Browns some love here. I put them over the Eagles uh, in the defense with Jim Schwartz is unbelievable. So they, they deserve to be there. Unlike Philly, they actually figured out their defense, and they've been really good. I have the Los Angeles Rams, though, at six. I have them higher, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. They've won three games in a row, and you could say, well, Jeff, they barely beat the Giants. Well, Philly barely beat the Giants. And you still put respect on them. So That's I'm still so I'm, I'm, I'm what? It's not the same. I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish. I, so I have the Rams higher. One of the hottest teams in the NFL. I said I still think they're a really good football. Offensively, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. And they still have Aaron Donald on the other side defensively. I I think the Rams are, are being slapped down. They're nine and seven. I get that. But guess what? They blew out the Browns with Joe Flacco. Blew them out in that defense. So Rams better put some respect in their name. I have them at six. Uh, number five, I have the Miami Dolphins. And Sam's right. They got absolutely obliterated by the Ravens. But before that, they beat the Cowboys. So I, I got to give them still credit. I know Bradley Chubb, but the loss of Bradley Chubb, it's significant. But I still like Miami offensively. They're going to get Jalen Waddle back. They'll have Tyreek Hill, you know, the best receiver in football. I think they'll be all right. I don't have them going much farther than maybe a playoff win anyway. But they're a top five team to me. Four, the Dallas Cowboys. Them and the Lions, you can really make an argument from 3-4 to 5. You, you can switch it up however you want. I feel like Detroit's still the better team. They played better uh, on Saturday. It, it should have turned out the way it turned out. Obviously, it did not. S -s mistakes that the Lions made themselves, including at the end there, and then the referees just completely saying, F you, see you later. Dan Skipper, you declared uh, you were eligible, even though he didn't. So I think the Lions still deserve the respect. They, they, they played good enough to win that game on Saturday. They did, and they just unfortunately did not. I think they're playing better. They're a better football team. Uh, number two, I had the San Francisco 49ers. I don't need to speak on that. Best team in the NFC. I don't think the drop-off, though, between the 49ers and the rest of the teams is as significant as, as it was. I still like the 49ers as favorites, 
but I think it, the the it, the ground's kind of covered there more than it was before. So respect to them, but hey, NFC to me is still kind of wide open a little bit. Baltimore, not even a debate worthy. They're the best team in football. Lamar Jackson's the MVP. That defense is scary, and I think that's the most obvious pick on this entire list. So there's my list. Uh, Sam Flannel, I know you. I see you huffing and puffing. What do you What do you got beef with? Talk to me. Rams What's wrong? At, Rams at six. I think that is way too high. This is going to be a team that probably will finish the season nine and eight. Well, because they rest their starters. Okay, fine. But this, you you have. I cannot put. And I get it that this team has been playing bad lately. I, I don't think you can put the Rams over the Eagles. I think if they were to line up and play right now, that the Eagles would win. Are you sure? I am pretty sure. They just lost to one of the worst teams in the NFL no, in a I, shootout. No, I understand So that. you think Kyler Murray or Matthew Stafford? Stafford. And what about the weapons? Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, or what the Cardinals have? Well, Trey obvi- McBride. Obviously what the, what, what the Rams have. Obviously what, what the Rams have. Trey Aaron McBride Donald now. is a better defensive player than they have on the Cardinals. 100%. My thing is just that you have to have somewhat of a body of work to be that high on the list. They, they won three seven. straight. Okay, fine. They, they And they were a missed Giants field goal away from losing. And I get it. I don't want to play in the like the if game or anything like that. But to compare. And the, the, the Eagles were, a, a, they, they had a shot to win the game and they, a touchdown. They, they won by, the Eagles won by eight and were in have control to for most of the they'd game. They'd have to compu- convert a two point. They'd have to get a two-point conversion but they were in that game all right but the eagles were ahead for most of it and they had some self-inflicted wounds it wasn't like the the uh it wasn't like the giants rams game where the rams were legitimately a giants made field goal away from winning and i get it i I like the rams they are on my list i just think at six is crazy i even think that you have them above the browns is kind of crazy and i know they they blew out the browns 36 19 loves head to head that's why people feel so emboldened to say burrowhead when they talk about (laughs) kansas city chiefs and patrick mahomes everything is built on head to head okay that was a little douchey but still (laughs) i i just i I think there's there's more to the nfl than than head to head i think the browns have proven a lot more throughout the year than the rams have well here's the thing you you, when you could say well jeff they barely beat the giants which i think is it doesn't that Okay, uh, because this you know how the league works. If we're going to go through and nitpick close wins, you can bring up good teams that have close wins over bad teams. But how can I disrespect a team that's won six of the last seven? Explain that to me. We mean the Rams? Yeah. Do and they've beaten the Browns. They, they lost in overtime to the Baltimore Ravens. What are we doing here? They beat the Seahawks. It's pretty good wins. I and, ha- and they beat the Cardinals in which... The Eagles could not. Are you saying that? And they blew out the Cardinals. Are you saying that I'm disrespecting the Rams? I have them on my list. You have them at six. You have a problem with where I have them. So I'm giving you I'm giving be- you reasons. I'm and giving you not, the reasons. And you know, and they're not better than the Chiefs. There, I oh, said no. it. They're not better than oh, the Chiefs. Line them up right now. Set. The Chiefs win. You sure? They 100 percent win. Are you absolutely sure? I would bet my life that the Chiefs win. You'd bet my your life? life? Sam Flannel wins the funeral. I'll attend that funeral. And I'll wear a little Los Angeles Rams little pin in my suit when I attend it. You know what? Because it, you know that's not happening. You know whose funeral it they would be? They barely beat the Raiders. And the Raiders beat them, by the way. Okay, See fine. You later. And that's fine. And that's fine. You know whose funeral it would actually be if they lined up? It would be Matthew Stafford's professional funeral when Chris Jones would knock him out of the game. Yes, oh, oh, I went there that, again. In that pass, that, how's the pass protection looking for the Chiefs? And you got Aaron Donald. How's that working out? Explain. I'll wait. Well, Matt, well, I think... Guy Patrick, was running around it for his life last game, Pat Mahomes, last couple of games. How's, the, how's that pass? How's that O-line looking in Kansas City? The interior of the O-line is actually pretty good. Who you worry about in Kansas City Chiefs are their tackles. Juwan Taylor is absolute ass, by the way. He's been helping get Patrick Mahomes killed. I just... I don't even... I wouldn't even put the Rams ahead of the Bills. The... the You're acting like the Bills are trash! Rams won six of seven. Bills... What? Four in a row! Wow! There you go. I win, you lose. Four in a row. I guess they're on a real cold streak right now. But also, it's not just... I'm bringing up the the six of seven, but it's also how the Rams look. Matthew Stafford looks way better than Josh Allen. Right now, yeah. Way better than Josh Allen. But Josh Allen also is a rushing touchdown machine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So because he runs, And they have a better defense than the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah. Awesome. Have you heard of Kyron Williams? Uh, he actually has the most rushing yards per game in the NFL. Yeah, Kyron Williams is good. Wh- oh, when, he's good. Wh- when did I say anything about Kyron Williams? I'm just giving you the facts about the Rams. I think he deserved the Pro Bowl over Jameer Gibbs, by the way. I'm a Kyron Williams hater. I'm just saying. No, I'm not saying the- that. I just put some respect. Guys, and this is why I, when I make my list, I don't go off, I just I can't go off just record. I go off how the teams are playing. That's my opinion. Rams are 9-7. and seven. I think the teams under them, they'd beat any of those teams right now. That's... I- 
they're not beating. You think you you said by quote, I'd put my life on yes. the Chiefs beating the Rams. Yes, I would. <laughs> I'd put my life. R.I.P. Sam Flannel. <laughs> Jay, where are you guys at with the Rams? I I just think they're one of the hotter teams in the NFL. And I think if you if you watch the NFL, you know that. I mean, that's fair to say. I don't think I have them at six. I believe I have them probably around eight right now. Well, I don't think that's like too harsh or too disrespectful at all. They have been on a hot streak as of lately. The respect to Matthew Stafford after finally coming back. You know, Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup are top wide receivers that you cannot just leave open or underestimate at all. So, I, I like the Rams. I'm just not putting them as, as high as six, if I'm being honest. And uh, no disrespect to Sam Flano and his Chiefs, but I do have them at 10. Right above them, though, are the Buffalo Bills. Like, they're, oh, they're, they're kind of teetering. You victim to the Bills, too, JB. <laughs> oh, they're, my God. They're teetering Stop right watching there Nick well Wright. Too. Jeff, stop watching Nick Wright. You're says, doing the exact says same thing. Says the Chiefs thing. lover. Uh, stop watching Nick Wright. I think we should. I put my <laughs> life on the Chiefs putting over the it's over so the Rams. It's so because I'm doing the best. <laughs> Should I love it? I. You know what? <laughs> I just think the Rams people are sleeping on them. That's all. And I love Matthews. And that it's not even a biased thing. I just think the Rams are Sean McVay, hell of a coach. Yes. He should be more in more consideration for coach of the year. I don't think he'll win it, but he should be in that race. They could done an impressive job with what the Rams have done this year. They are. They're one of the hotter teams. Yeah. And the no. Bills, I don't know, man. They, they might not make the playoffs. Okay, because of the conference that they're in. The Rams are going to make the playoffs as a 9-8 and eight team. Congratulations. And, oh, by the way, the Bills might get, drum roll, please, the two seed. <laughs> 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 Those bum-ass Bills. <laughs> Who have came from the ground, came back from the dead, and won four consecutive hey. games, including at Arrowhead. Look at this. Look at this, Griffin Lackey's flannel. It's a power ranking, not a record ranking. Is that fair? I understand that's, that's that. That's where I was at with it. If it's a power rankings, you got to go with the Rams right now. Overall, yeah, I would probably have them a little bit lower. But if it's a power ranking, man, they've been hot, hot, hot. Some of the teams above them that uh, yeah, flannel things are above them have been kind of shaky over the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. Hey, we disagree. I can't wait. This is what I, I love because we have these debates. But we get to see it play out. Yeah, we do. I met a man. I, mm -mm. I might have gotten a little, a, a little crazy I wish the there, Rams would right. play the Chiefs right now. I would love that would be that would be a fun one. I, I think I don't want to see Flannel die. <laughs> Flannel <laughs> Flannel would be Come he'd on. be dead by halftime, I think. He dead would, by halftime. <laughs> Tra, Tra, hey, I love Travis Kelsey. That boy's cooked. Yeah, yeah, he actually so, is. I'm not, I'm, I'm, just, not, I'm not even going to lie. He, right. he looks like he doesn't even want to be there. <laughs> like can't hey, wait for hey, to go on hey, tour. Weak legs from Taylor Swift, JB. I tried telling you. I can't, told you to stay away from her. I can't wait for that new Taylor Swift album. Just saying. Oh, my. You're still simping. <laughs> It's weird. It's though. the one that got away for JB. It's, it's truly. Is. It's weird though because, in my personal opinion, Travis Kelsey's previous girlfriend is better looking than Taylor Swift. So I'm assuming he had weak legs from that girlfriend as well. <laughs> but he was younger, and yeah. I, I honestly think it's with Tra I think with Travis Kelsey too, and I'm being dead serious about this. I think that winning that second Super Bowl, he just doesn't have that fire anymore. Especially given the I fact agree. that there is nothing more left for him to prove in the NFL. Uh, Todd, Todd says, Sam, don't let Jeff do your eulogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, was... please. Please. I want to do it. You know what? I'm not going to lie. I kind of lost myself a little bit there. I probably shouldn't have bet my life on a game. I just, uh, <laughs> I just, uh... Hey, I had to pay up. You got to pay. No, I'm just okay, kidding. I just got to uh, I... <laughs> All right, let's go to break. When we come back, I just blew through the, the freaking segment. Now, I mean, we were arguing it is what it is. We pivoted. All right, let's get into what's running with JB, and then we'll get to mailbag. That was fun. Thank you, Sam Flannel, for that. Oh. I enjoy arguing th with you. Th thank you, Joe. Uh, but before we do that, i got to hear about our friends from Guardian Alarm. Guardian Better Alar defense than those fraudulent Chiefs, I'll tell you that. Hey, well, well, it's because it's Guardian Alarm. But most defenses aren't better than the Chiefs' defense, by the way. It's a new year. Let Guardian Alarm offer you customized solutions from real experts. Our professional technicians take the time to recommend security and auto-based solutions specific to your needs. 24-7 professional monitoring. Call us anytime, day or night. Know that a Guardian team member will stay on the phone as long as needed. Technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work and people have been proven to care. Call 1-800-STAY-OUT. That's 1-800-STAY-OUT. Guardian Alarm, your local security experts. Stay out. At work and at home. 
We're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Now, coming to Woodward Sports. Woodward and Main Street. The Woodward Sports Network Detroit Lions Show. Let's go! Catch Gabrielle D. Phillips, Matt Broder, and Terry Foster for all the latest news on your Detroit Lions every week. Only on the Woodward Sports Network YouTube channel and woodwardsports.com. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness! Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Join Woodward Sports' own Jeff Iafrady, along with special WSN guests for the most anticipated Lions season in decades. Filled with different surprises and expert analysis. You're not going to want to miss out. Go to our Woodward Sports YouTube channel on Sundays and tune in live from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. We're back. Morning, Woodward Show, Woodward Sports Network. Uh, again, just really quickly, I want to start saying this because I've been I've been kind of slacking on it. But in case you guys don't know, we are on all podcast platforms. The Morning Woodward Show. You want to leave a five star review? That'd be great. Maybe right in there. Hey Sam, you're gonna die because the Rams will beat the Chiefs. That's crazy to you say that. If you want to type that, that's fine too. Just leave a five star review. We appreciate you. It's time to get to what's trending with JB Smoke. JB, what do you got for us? Hey, so. Not to bring up old memories, but you guys remember when uh, Derek Barnes missed that tackle on Dak Prescott, right? Still have cold sweats about it. Yeah, well, I think I have the perfect replacement for this guy. Oh, oh, hey, oh, oh. oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, see, that's that's a tackle. That's yeah, right there. That, that, that's a tackle oh, right there. Did he, did he jump at the judge? He jumped at the judge. This is, I don't know who the guy is, but apparently... Uh, he what? leaped at her for basically denying his bail. So I I don't know what happened there. But shout out to our Lions, the NFC North Championships. The banner is hanging in the practice facility right now as we speak. I wish I could get one of these in the house. What, what do you guys think? What's his vertical on that? That had to be a 40-inch <laughs> The vertical. prison Olympic. Yeah. <laughs> Are we did he get gotta get this guy on like work release or something like that to uh, play linebacker for the Why Detroit Lions? That, I mean, somebody, the, come on, he was flying over there like Troy Polamalu. Yeah. <laughs> he looked like J Mo on that touchdown, Troy, bro. Troy, <laughs> hey, get that man on special teams, oh man. You talk about blocking punts, blocking kicks. He's got you covered. But like all seriousness, no, though, that dude would have got a roughing the passer for that. <laughs> <laughs> Contact to the head or something like that. That that's what that would have gotten. Man, the NFL so soft back in the day back yeah. in the day what they used to be able to do back back in the day when you know when it used to be great and good like that but um <laughs> that this, is crazy this, I, I got another video for you guys so this happened a couple days ago and i don't kink shame but dan orlowski I, I didn't know you got down like this man Yo, that is molly corm shoe he is Yo, holding is right he there doing? what dan Dude, just wait Oh, oh Dan. Dan. No. Dan, why, Throw the why flag. you do that, man? Throw the flag on that. Throw Dan, the flag Dan, on that. He just ran yeah, out of the back of the end zone there. Yeah, you can't save that. No way. But why? I, I don't even know no. how he got her shoe Dude's in at the same time, but why Why would you do that, man? Just man, why? He was... <laughs> He was looking at it. He was enjoying that too much. <laughs> that man, hey, 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 I respect what everyone does when the when the doors are closed. It, 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 you can do whatever you want. You can be a freak. I don't give a damn. It's your life. Mike, that that he, is he, on ESPN. That man is into toes. Uh, he's, he, I don't. That I know when I see it. That man's into toes. There's no debate. He's. The big, the big question is is whether or not Mrs. Orlovsky is is down for that, or Dan Orlovsky just has some unrequited, just like bent up tension <laughs> and just wanted to sniff a shoe. I, Sam, 
<laughs> Sam, if your outlet for having stress is sniffing another coworker's shoe, specifically a female, I mean, hey, Dan Olofsky, he's a, he's a very, very bright football mind. All right, I love listening to his analysis. But that man likes toes. So do you think Mrs. Orlovsky's down? There's no way you can just hide that for in a marriage, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, D- Daniel says Dan and Rex Ryan have been hanging out. Yeah, that's why. I, yeah, that's probably He's why. with Rex too much. He, he Guys is, are smelling toes together. What's going on over there? Oh, man? He has probably been hanging out with Rex just a little too much. But uh, once again, shout out to the ball nor Lucas Cox, because I know he's not still here with us at the network, but he's still helping us out here with the franchise of the Detroit Lions, trying to help us out for the future. As he sent me over this, the 2024 mock draft from the 33rd team. And do you see where the Lions are picking right there? 27. Of course, I knew he'd send this. 27th right there. (laughs) Uh, Cornerback from Toledo. Uh, Apologize if I get his name wrong. Quinion Mitchell? I've seen a couple of his highlight tapes, so I just want your guys' opinion. What do you think of this guy and his accolades that he's a so far? You got a mixtape for him? I mean, that mixtape is all American. Look at this. Second in the nation with 18 pass breakups. As Lucas says, he got that dog. Yeah, he's got that dog. Strictly all Lucas Quats needed to see was he's from Toledo. And that is all he needed to see. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, she's making plays. First Rocket in 52 years to be named to a major All-American team in consecutive seasons. This, this actually, this kind of right goes. There. This actually goes kind of hard, though. My, my <laughs> question to you guys: I can't even lie. After seeing that, all his accomplishments, do you think this could quite possibly be the Lions' pick at 27? Um, this is an early prediction. I think they'll take a corner. I don't know if it'll be the man from Toledo. If they want to take a guy from Toledo, just beware. Uh, I've met one, and his name's Lucas Klotz, and that was a movie. Uh, but there's – I listen, t- do whatever you want to do. I mean, hell, I don't care if the, the corner sniffs toes or sniffs shoes. I don't give it – if you can guard somebody, I'm cool with you. I'm cool with you. I don't care. Well, th- it's not outside the realm of the possibility that they take this guy because they, the Lions, they do need a corner. That is one of the weaknesses of their defense. And I understand that their defense has never been healthy all year long because of Emmanuel Mosley being out. But are, is Emmanuel Mosley ever going to play a down for the Detroit Lions as long as he lives besides for those couple that he played when in that week where he got hurt again? I don't know. The Lions do need a corner. And this guy has been damn impressive, even if it has been for Toledo. There have been a lot of mid-major players who have become superstars and Hall of Famers in the NFL. I wouldn't discount him just because he went to Toledo, especially considering Toledo had a good year. I think they won 11 games. So kudos to uh, Toledo. Shout out Lucas Klotz. 419. Alex says, I want to see his lowlights. I mean, I... <laughs> Probably, I don't know. I, I don't know who that is. Like, I don't watch Toledo football. Yep. I, I'm just not, you know, maybe yeah. I'm un, uninformed with that. Yeah, I, I don't watch Toledo football as well, but the highlights look nice. I mean, he's got like 36 pass deflections over the last two years. So, hey, I'm not a scientist or I'm not a football expert, but that that's pretty impressive, I'd say, right? Yeah, that's damn impressive. And lastly, Lucas wanted me to play this for you, Jeff. He needs a little bit of explanation on oh, this. It's, what uh, is this? It, it's your boy. It's your boy, Drizzy. Yeah. What is he wearing? What is this man? I don't know. He he just wanted me to ask you what what is this man wearing? If you could explain, please. I got nothing for you, to be honest with you. I'll take. I'd rather. Drake just sniff shoes at this point. Like I, I think there's lo- there's you probably be you'd probably understand it more than wearing a bow, uh, a pink bow for that matter. He's just he's zesty. I don't know. He's is, a, is that the new sweatband? No, uh, it's not. No one's wearing that. Is that the new that. headband? Kool Aid. No, no is that the new headband? <laughs> no one's rocking. Is that the new headband? Just let me know. It, is K rocking that <laughs> no, the next game? Not at all, bro. Not yeah, at all. Look like he got that for Molly Kim. I mean, <laughs> not not even Corey Joseph would rock that. He's from Canada. Like, there's no way. That's not a. That's a Drake thing. Not a can. That's that's just him. You know, a lot of people are are gonna probably take shots at me when I say this to say that like obviously you're Exhibit A of men not being men. But when were men actually men? I wouldn't. I don't mind if he kind of has like a weird style, or if he's wearing like uh, I don't know a winter cap or something like that. But a bow, no, on the 
It's zesty. On the basketball court? It's a little zesty. I don't like it. No, I, like I, I, don't, I can't. I can't defend that. How about a little shorts and a t-shirt? Maybe shorts and a uh, tank top or something like that. How about that, Drake? Detroit Dabber three one three says Drake holding pockets in the locker room. Well, that's I don't I don't know about you know what that's his that's his prerogative. If, you know, I don't judge. Uh, I didn't even judge Dan. Keep sniffing toes. I don't you know what I mean. He's looking like we, we, don't judge. we we don't we judge don't judge here, but that's what's trending with Jamie. Think, Back to you guys. I think Ransom was answering my question like when we're men, men, and he says World War Two. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I don't think men are built like that today. There's no like it. Like my dad's very old school, but you just it, from the people I've I've encountered with, the more ze- it, it's there's a lot more zesty people out there. You know, a lot of Drakes out there. It just is what it is. Not my cup of tea, but hey, live your life, do what you want to do. JB, you got the graphic of the uh, the, the banner. Oh yeah, yeah. Throw that up, cause this is, you know what? That'll this will cure all the BS we just had to go through, right? Zesty Drake and Dan Orlovsky sniffing toes. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that bear. Mm, be proud of it's that. It's a be bear. Proud. It's a bear ass wall, though. <laughs> come here, come on. You don't gotta make light of the wall. Just make light of the banner. It's just, it's like, it's like a, sing, it looks like a single dude's apartment, like his wall. Like you have one, you have one picture on the wall and that's all you got. That's what that, that's what that looks like. But he's on his way, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. He's on, hey, he's getting there. He's going to put up another photo, put up a little poster. We yeah. got the first one down. So you know what? That That's a beauty. I love that. <sighs> got to start somewhere. It makes everything yeah. right That there. does kind of look like some of my old apartments where I had like no bed frame. My laptop was my <laughs> yeah. TV. Nothing on the wall. Nothing in the fridge. Back at, back to the back to the college you got like You got like milk and one yogurt in there. It's like <laughs> most random crap in the fridge. Maybe a bag of chips. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it, like it's just. I was a, I am what, what, what some people would call a late bloomer. Yeah, it's okay. Some might say in the chat that I haven't bloomed, but you know what? It's all good. So Sam, you're not even in your prime yet. I'd like to think that I got I got some better years ahead, but who knows? All right. Did you see the comment from Mittenmate? No. He said Drake is definitely a ball knower. Oh yeah. Ooh. No. Ooh. That's the wrong type of balls. That's he knows. A, I don't know what. Uh, that was a fair shot. It's a different. Uh, to Danny Bennett says Jeff. It looks like a wall at a CrossFit box. <laughs> <laughs> Lions talked by Chad Sports. Shout out Mike. He says that was funny. AF Jeff. Uh, Kyle Burt says NFC champs let's go Eric Allen says single dude's only picture would be an NFC North champ banner not even his own family that's, spot actually, on. that's facts <laughs> hey I, Eric I, facts. I, I, hey, I don't hate on it do what you gotta do that's, 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 you know? that's like, big like you facts. see guys if you, and I know you the audience will relate to this if you watch St. Brown's podcast that's what I'm talking about you see his background it's, it's like the most bare, bare ass wall, room yeah. with yeah. like one thing. You know, single guys don't give a damn. You just you're living in your apartment, especially St. Brown. He's just chilling. He's got he's got these signed jerseys, and they're not even hung up. Yeah, it would probably take five minutes to hang those up. But but they just sit right on the floor. That's a single guy. That's what that's what they do. It gives a shit. It just sits right on the floor. Yeah, signed jerseys just sitting on the floor. That how disrespectful. Come on now. <laughs> just, like that's the <laughs> amount. Of, that's the amount of f's that single single dudes give. They yeah. don't give a damn about decorations. And we all know that Amon Ross St. Brown is a ball is life kind of guy. Ball is yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Especially when you see like his his dad and how he raised him. Definitely a ball is life guy. It's probably how he got so good, so successful in the NFL. I heard he has no water in the house, only spit. Hey, it's what he drinks. Uh, I mean, no water. That's just his own spit in a cup. He's built different. <laughs> yeah. like, 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 that's per John Brown. That's per his, John Brown. Yeah. He, that's one where I'm like, I respect it, but damn, we don't want nobody getting heat stroke out. There. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to break. When we get back, get your questions ready. We'll get to mailbag, of course. But first, we gotta hear about our friends from Lady James. Lady now, James. Now that's where single guys go to get upgraded. I'll hey, that. that is where I go to get these haircuts, and I am not a single guy. So even married you guys can get upgraded at old Lady Jane's. Come to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience. Register to win a trip of your dreams and all expenses paid suite for the 2024 NCAA tournament. That's right, no expense paid for you and five of your best buds. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in any time. It's wicked awesome. Come to Lady Jane's for an award-winning haircut experience and register for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win an all-expenses-paid suite for the 2024 NCAA tournament for you and five of your best buds. Lady Jane's open seven days a week. Walk in any time. It's wicked awesome. 
Join Woodward Sports' own Jeff Iafrady, along with special WSN guests, for the most anticipated Lions season in decades. Filled with different surprises and expert analysis. You're not going to want to miss out. Go to our Woodward Sports YouTube channel on Sundays and tune in live from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. We've just received word the world's cannabis supply has vanished. The public is outraged and has taken to the streets in response to this tragedy. The individual responsible acted alone, and we can only hope they will make things right soon. Dreaming of a new home but feeling the financial pinch? Mark White & Associates, your trusted real estate experts, are here to help. Mark White and his team will pay up to $5,000 of your closing costs. That's right, I said $5,000. Call Mark White & Associates today at 248-290-8242 or visit them at markwhitesells.com. Again, call Mark White today at 248-290-8242 to make your dreams come true. Morning, Woodward Show. Woodward Sports Network. Look at that back wall. That Premier Pet Supply. It's a beautiful... Look at that graphic. There Jake and Milo would be proud. That. They would be. They wouldn't be proud of you putting your life on the line for the Chiefs, but they'd be proud of everything else. <laughs> that was a little reckless. Oh, hey, it is I got it is. caught up. Hey. But, <laughs> hey, hey, it's what's said is said. I can't unsay it, so I guess I have to... Uh, Live my life to the fullest for a while. Just take a deep breath <laughs> and smell a shoe like Dan Orlovsky. You'll be hey, all right. Hey, live uh, like you are dying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the mailbag. We'll read some of these comments. We'll start us off with uh, with Jesse's question. Mailbag, Jeff, is it true that Caitlin Clark is going to be Troy's next draft pick? She would help Cade from three this year. Damn. Yeah, she would. Um, she's a hooper, by the way. I'm a big fan of Clay- Caitlin Clark. She She's a baller. She's a hooper. Uh, now, is it Troy's next draft pick? F it. Jesse, at this point, uh, yeah, we'll take all the help we can get. <laughs> I mean, she she I, I don't care if she can play defense or not. They can't stop anybody anyway. So if you can shoot threes, you're welcome. I don't give a damn who you are, where you come from, how short or tall you are, boy, woman, black, white. You get over here and you shoot threes. They need it bad. Uh, so I'm cool with Caitlin Clark. I'm cool with it. Uh, this comment here, we'll go to Eric Allen. Mailback, does Hutch score his first career TD? Being that he has sick hands in this game will be a wild one. I actually think it's possible. Ooh. Um, I don't know, Sam. Final, does he kill Nick Mullins today or what? What would you say? Well, or on, on, on Sunday? I don't, well, <laughs> professionally maybe. It wouldn't shock me if Aiden Hutchinson knocks uh, Nick Mullins out of the game. But no, I'm not in the business of predicting touchdowns for defensive ends. They're just, they're just so random. I mean, who is that D tackle for the Raiders that got a touchdown because Patrick Mahomes and, and the running back, I, I don't even know who it was at the time, botched that weird trick play and just picked it up and ran into the end zone. It's too random. I'm not, I'm not going to go predicting that. I mean, right. Brian Branch was another one, a defensive player who just happened to be benefit from Kadarius Tony dropping a ball. It's just, it's too random to predict touchdowns for defensive players. Eduardo O'Neill says, this is a good question. Uh, not that the others weren't, but I just like this one because you don't, they don't really talk about this a lot. He says, do you think the division will be a dogfight next year? Every team has the potential to finish 3-3 three and three in the division play this year, which goes to show how close we all are to each other. I, I will say this. I, the Bears are interesting because I don't like Matt Eberflus. I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in him. I don't. If I'm the Bears, I fire him. You draft Caleb Williams. You get an offensive mind and let's go. That's how I would approach it. Uh, but the Bears want to do what the Bears want to do, and they want to keep Mr. Toledo himself, Eberflus, and keep Fields. So I don't know how that's going to turn out. I don't know what kind of jump Fields takes. So I'm not – the Bears, to me, are, it is what it is. The Packers are going to get better. I know that because they're one of the younger rosters, and I'm not saying that because I'm gassing up the Packers. That's just factual. If it was the Lions, we'd say the same thing. They're young. They'll only get better next year. The Packers will get better. The Vikings are interesting because – they're kind of half-assing this rebuild where Kirk keeps them competitive and they got weapons. And I think the, the Vikings will be in play. So, Sam, I think it will be a close race. And that's why I was frustrated that, and I understand why, don't attack me, that Brad didn't go make a move at the deadline because it's it's this is the, the, the year where it's like, you're going to win the division. It is what it is. Next year, I think it'll be closer. I do. I still think the Lions win it, 
but I think there'll be other teams in play. I do. Well, even this year, I thought for sure that at least one of the other division teams were going to be a four or five win team or something like that. But all of them are going to finish probably around 500, a little bit below, or in the Packers case, they might even finish above 500 and get into the playoffs. So that's uh, that's a hell of an accomplishment. Like you said, Jordan Love is a guy who a lot of us doubted, but in some ways this season even had a more impressive year than Jared Goff, considering the run game that he has with Aaron Jones being out for most of for a lot of the year and a J. Dillon is a bomb. He is. That, 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 that's just facts right now. The Chicago Bears, they got a lot of draft picks. They got a lot of a lot better defensively this year. DJ Moore turned out to be a hell of a, a get for them in that in that trade. And Justin Fields, he's shown some things. I still don't know if it would behoove the Bears to draft Caleb Williams or build around Justin Fields. I don't know yet because in a lot of ways his numbers have improved, but or his or his season has been better. But you look at the numbers, they're still kind of pedestrian at this point. Right. And with the Vikings, I don't know. I don't know whether, and you kind of mentioned this at, at some point during the year, whether they're going to go into a rebuild or they're going to kind of live in Kirk Cousins purgatory. Because with Kirk Cousins back, I, I think that they could win 9 or 10 or 11 games next year. But you just, you don't know. It's uh, going to be more wide open, though. Don beats his mailbag. Would y'all rather have Will Harris or Drake in your secondary? I'm taking Drake. It's a lose-lose <laughs> situation. I Actually, Don, I'm with you. Uh, they might have just as fluid of hips. Uh, I don't know. Will Harris, <laughs> he's going to get cooked out there. Drake would easily get cooked out there. At least it'd be kind of funny with Drake out there, though. I will say this. Like he's though. getting cooked with a little like pink bow on his head. It'd be kind of funny. <laughs> Before I saw that pink bow video, I would have said Drake. Now, give me Will Harris. I don't even care. Oh, Damn. Don't, I don't ever want to hear those words. Give me Will Harris. If, As a if, cornerback. If, if Will Harris sees this, I love you, Will, but preferably you just stay on the sidelines. And that's, I'm just being honest. Pink bows and football don't go together. Uh, here we go. Uh, this I want to read this comment because I want to get to a couple more. Uh, Jake says, mail sack. Does Flannel remember how people came after Jeff when he didn't pay up on his bet? LOL. Hey, they were they were on my ass like flies on shit. Pause. <laughs> but they were they were on my ass for that, Sam Flannel. Well, here's, so I'd beware. Here's, There's a matchup in any realm. Let's say they both make the Super Bowl. Oh, God. Here's the good news. I, I don't want you to die, but... I, 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 don't, I don't want you to die, but... I don't think anybody in their right mind is predicting a Rams Chiefs Super Bowl. So I at least <laughs> have a few good wild. months left in me, at least. But you know what? I still think, I think for sure if they played at Arrowhead, that I think the Chiefs would win. But who knows? How many more years does Matthew Stafford have left? Maybe yeah, the Rams so go fair. into a little bit of a perpet or of a, a down stretch. I don't know. I did say that on air though. That was pretty reckless. Although I think you made an official bet, and I just kind of said it with emotion. But I still said it. I still said it. But. Don't make me die if it actually happens. Uh, <laughs> that's a little bit, that's a little bit ball, too harsh. Cue ball 93 mailbag. I don't know about shoe sniffing, but toe licking is okay. Well, that's... Uh, I, is I'm it? Just, I'm just reading the comment. All hey, right, we don't cue think balls in, here. Yeah, cue ball, you're into what you're into, my man. I, you know, it is what it is. All right. Uh, we'll get to one more. William Scott mailbag. No question. Just want to say great show as always and awesome people in the chat always staying engaged and providing additional entertainment. Well, William Scott, we appreciate you for tuning in this morning. No, w uh, William Scott's the man. Yes, but he the, is. Uh, LVP of the chat today, the least valuable player, is definitely one funky Lions fan. You had yourself a bad day, brother. Uh, and again, it's it, to William Scott and to everybody tuning in all the way to the end of the show. We, we appreciate you so much. It, you guys make this show uh, and you make this a lot of fun for all of us. So thank you. Tomorrow we'll be back. I'm going to try and get Mike, if you're listening, I want you on tomorrow. And we're going to preview Vikings Lions. I'll reach out to him after the show. It'll be a good one tomorrow. It'll be a fun one previewing Michigan, uh, Washington, Lions, Vikings, all that and more. We'll go around the NFL. We'll give pickums. It's always a fun one on a Friday. Jeff Iafrady, Sam Flannel, Brandon Dent, and JB. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. Have a blessed day, and don't forget tuning into the tune into the rest of the shows here on Wilbur Sports Network. Deuces.